You are watching Stadium's coverage of Conference USA football. Things are cooking in the Commonwealth, both pregame and they're about to be on the field as UTSA, the Roadrunners, storm into Bowling Green to take on Western Kentucky. We have got star power galore tonight. Sincere McCormick, the Conference USA Offensive Player of the Year from a season ago, is back and leading CUSA in rush yards again. And how about this guy, Western Kentucky quarterback Bailey Zappi, the FBS leader in passing yards per game. Welcome inside Houchins Smith Stadium. I'm Chris Fosters. Western Kentucky leads the country in passing yards per game, but they are just one in three on the season. Something doesn't add up there. If you look at the schedule, Western Kentucky has lost close games to Army and Indiana, and then had a very tough road game last weekend against the Spartans of Michigan State. But the schedule does not get any easier for Western Kentucky tonight as UTSA 5-0 on the season is in the house and has a chance to go to 6-0 for the first time in program history. It's been a season of firsts already for the Roadrunners. They knocked off a Big Ten team for the first time ever, Illinois, in week one. And then in week two, they shut out an opponent, Lamar 54-0 for the first ever shutout in program history. Under the lights, it's going to be a good one as I welcome in my broadcast partner, Seth Bonner. Seth, hello. Western Kentucky's offense has done a 180 from last year to this year. Why is that? Well, Coach Helton took a look at what they were doing offensively. He wasn't happy. This is a program that's been dominant on the offensive side of the ball. You take a look at these numbers, it was embarrassing for this program with the way they've dominated and thrown the ball and played offensive football. Now, this year, the numbers are completely turned around, including that first in the FBS rank in passing yards. And this man right here is the reason why transfer Bailey Zappi has done an outstanding job. And I think his IQ is way up there. You see him go through his read progression. He feels comfortable in the pocket, gets all the way back to his third read, puts it only where his guy can get it. This guy is fantastic at reading defenses, finds his matchup. Look at the number two right inside. He knows the middle field's wide open. He sees it early, looks the safety off just long enough to hold it, puts the ball right on the money. And this is what I love to see. If you could throw the ball with touch and be accurate, you've got something going. And here he drops it right in the bucket. Beautiful touch throw. He has a little scramble ability as well. Can get out of the pocket as you see him get around and watch this thread of the needle here, folks. Fantastic. Zappi could really throw the lights out, but on the other side for UTSA, Sincere McCormick doing what he did last year, and he's leading the conference in total rushing yards. Yeah, and he is a guy that just expects that out of himself. He practices that way during the week, does all these things, but you look at all of the superlatives that go along with his name. He has been outstanding and gotten better and improved each and every week, even with the target on his back. He's unafraid to go get the tough two, three yards, but he has that capability to burst it and get out of there at any time. As you see here with the long run, the speed, no one catching him. Patience, he's got great vision, and, and I can't emphasize enough on the power that he has to go along with that speed. This kid is really special. It's going to be the UTSA ground and pound of Sincere McCormick against the air raid attack of Western Kentucky. It's big offense, it's big defense. It's coming up next. There we are in Bowling Green, Kentucky, 79 degrees, a slight breeze at seven miles per hour and humidity right around 52%. It was warm during the day. Tyson Helton's offense is looking for a hot start tonight in his third season as Western Kentucky's head coach. He remembers the Conference USA Coach of the Year in 2019, his first season at the helm. Jeff Trailer has turned UTSA's program around. It feels like overnight. This is his second season. Got them to seven wins last year and a chance to go to 6-0 for the first time in program history with a win tonight. UTSA has won eight of its last nine. So, Seth, how you feeling? It's uh, been great watching all the college football action so far today. And now our game, and this is going to do a lot to clarify the landscape of Conference USA, both in the East and the West, whoever wins this one. Yeah, and I think for, for Western Kentucky, right, you know, they, they you look at the record, you're like one and three, but man, this is an explosive team. UTSA, to have the ability to come out and do something no one in your program's ever done, I mean, it's got to get your juices going. We're in for a barn burner tonight. 
Corey Munson is ready to kick off for Western Kentucky. One and three on the season against 5-0 UTSA. Adrian Taylor, B.J. Daniels back deep to receive for the Roadrunners. It's through the back of the end zone, and it's first and 10 UTSA from the 25. Frank Harris, he calls the Alamo City home. He was born in San Antonio. He's playing college football in San Antonio. 20 starts in Roadrunners uniform. He's overcome a lot of injury over the course of his career, but he is playing his best football right now. In particular, his last game said, his head coach Jeff Trailer said it was the best he had ever seen him. Yeah, he was extremely clean, did a nice job, 278 yards, two touchdowns, took care of the ball, right? Decisive. He's made a lot of changes in his mechanics. It doesn't look the prettiest, but the ball is on time and on target most of the time. And that handoff on target right to Sincere McCormick, five yards to the 30-yard line, and he's tackled by D'Angelo Malone who's going to have to have a, a big night for Western Kentucky to slow the UTSA attack. Tell you what, he's a veteran with a, with a lot of experience. He's made a ton of plays for the Hilltoppers. It's second and five. On the RPO, slant is caught by Joshua Cephas, and he takes it all the way to the 30-yard line of Western Kentucky. Tackled by Omari Alexander and a chunk play for the Roadrunners. Yeah, this is big and it's off an RPO. You see a zone coming down and, and he just knocks it out to a slot receiver. Cephas, bigger than your typical slot receiver at six foot two, is extremely explosive. Hurry up offense. Here's a shot play for DeCorian Clark and he just mossed Western Kentucky for the touchdown. He snagged that one over Beanie Bishop and in three plays. UTSA has a 6-0 lead. Man, at 6'2", 210 pounds, just goes up and takes it. And, and how about the feathery touch? You know, we're talking about Bailey Zappi all the time, but how about the feathery touch from Harris there? It just gives his man a chance. And that's all you ask for as a coach is to give your guy a chance to make a play. Special throw. Special catch. And Hunter Duplessis with the... Extra point attempt, it's good. And it took less than a minute for UTSA to go up 7-0. Nice play fake and right over the top, gives him a chance and great adjustment. Beautiful catch for the six and you couldn't ask for a better start for Frank Harris. Two for two with a score, spectacular start. Frank Harris loves it to Corian Clark with his third touchdown catch of the season. Did I, get, did I get my notes wrong? I thought it was Western Kentucky that was supposed to have the air raid attack. I, I, <laughs> that's why I said we came to see, yeah. you know, that famous quote from long ago when the Niners won their first Super Bowl. They came to see an offense and the wrong one showed up. It's a little <laughs> early to say that. However, what a start by the Roadrunners. Three plays, 75 yards. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. That continues a pattern for UTSA. They've scored first on five of their six opening drives this season. That's been a problem for Western Kentucky. They have not started fast, but now they have to if they want to equalize in the first quarter. Duplessis boots it away in the direction of Beanie Bishop. And on the return, Bishop is tackled at the 30-yard line. A good return for Western Kentucky. And now it's Bailey Zappi's turn to make an impact. Of course, a Houston Baptist transfer. He put up insane numbers running the air raid offense with Houston Baptist. And then he came to Western Kentucky with his offensive coordinator, Zach Kidley. And they are looking good in red. They were in blue previously. <laughs> and they're uh, pushing all the right buttons through the air for Western Kentucky. Boy, are they ever. And you, you talk about the, the Stearns brothers and uh, Ratzloff. I mean, they... You bring that kind of comfort for a quarterback, guys that you trust, guys you know are going to be where you need them to be. It makes it a special move, and it has been just that offensively. First play from scrimmage for the Hilltoppers. And Zappi takes a shot deep middle. It is hauled in by Daywood Davis, who's thundered down at about the 37-yard line of UTSA. Coming all the way from the backside. Look at him stick his foot in the ground, turns the safety completely around. That's a great route and a beautiful throw. Feathery touch right on the money. Receiver's able to catch and keep running. 
I, I'm excited right now because we got two QBs playing at a high level. This gets me excited. Handoff Noah Whittington. And he is stonewalled at the line of scrimmage by Rashad Wisdom up from the safety position for UTSA. Yeah, he's, he's a ball hawk, comes down hill in a hurry, very physical. And what you're going to see Western Kentucky try to do is get him out in space and in, into covering situations where he has to try to line up and cover some of these special wide receivers. Ground game is still important for Western Kentucky, even with this air raid attack. They want to keep UTSA's defense honest. It's second and a long nine. Jarrett Stearns in motion, and he catches it out of the backfield. Pushed out of bounds by Jalen Haynes. Uh, correction, that was Dadrian Taylor who pushed the pass catcher out of bounds very close to the first down marker. That was, a, that was a big hit. Launched him five yards out of bounds. And this is a very physical team, UTSA, and they play extremely hard and tough. But again, Zappi doing a great job getting the ball out of his hand early and on time, keeping his O-line playing clean. Big third and one here. It's Stearns who gets inside the 25-yard line and picks up a Western Kentucky first down. Let's take a look at Dadrian, Dadrian Taylor with this hit. I mean, that is picture perfect. <laughs> Physical. <laughs> I don't know if Stearns got hit like that at Houston Baptist. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Stearns transferred to Western Kentucky with his Houston Baptist quarterback, Bailey Zappi. There were three Houston Baptist wide receivers that joined the Western Kentucky program this season. First and 10 now from the 24 of UTSA. Kai Robichaux, the ball carrier, and he gets into the red zone. And again, just keeping him honest. You know, this is a, a very long and lengthy roadrunner defense. You got to make these guys run sideline to sideline. You see right now, the Hilltoppers going with 12 personnel right now. One back, two tights. Right back to Robichaux, who sidesteps a defender and is tackled from behind by Brandon Matterson. This is a great graphic. Just the second meeting ever between UTSA and Western Kentucky. UTSA has only been a program since 2011, a football program that is. Western Kentucky, they go all the way back to 1913, said Bonner's freshman year in college. <laughs> They've been around a long time. I look good for my age. <laughs> That's right, you do. You look great. I carry it well. You it's look, awesome. You look great. 98 <laughs> years between the starts of these two programs, and they collide tonight in Bowling Green. I'll tell you what, a great start for Frank Harris in this Roadrunner offense. You run a little bit, sprinkle a little McCormick in there, and then the zone read over the top middle with Cephas on the catch. And then the bomb, the quick strike, three and in, not three and out on the opening drive <laughs> that's, for that's the Roadrunners. I, I had to like steal that. that. Yeah. I had to steal that. It, it was uh, Andy Bach, our, our producer, sending that one down the line our way. Ari Tarr, our, our director tonight. we got a great crew. It's good to be with you on stadium as UTSA takes over the football for the second time tonight, first and ten. Harris guns it. Pass complete to Zakari Franklin. And he's pushed out of bounds at the 30-yard line by Beanie Bishop. Good to see him back on the field. He was a little bit dinged up, did not play last week against UNLV. Yeah, and it's another weapon. You know, the, all these guys over six feet tall, they all, they all, they can all run. They're bendy, they're quick, great route runners. It gives Frank Harris tons of options. And oh yeah, you've got that guy named Sincere McCormick next to you in the backfield. On second and six. Harris is a pretty capable runner as well. He crosses the 30-yard line, and third and four coming up. And that's a keep him honest play. You can't just pin your ears back and, and go after number three out of the backfield. Great pull by him. He gets a couple yards and very manageable third and short. It was the 34th rush of the season for UTSA quarterback Frank Harris. And on third down. On the slant, it's caught by Clark. 
He's brought down at the 36 by Khalif Halasi, and it's a UTSA first down. Yeah, and this is just too big of a body. You, you run like slot fades inside, and he comes underneath. Too big, too strong, and an accurate delivery by Frank Harris. First third down conversion of the ball game for UTSA. In the flat, that's the big tight end, Oscar Cardenas. You were talking about a big body with Clark. How about <laughs> Cardenas, 6'4", 275? It's an extra offensive lineman, and you, you look at Leroy Watson, the same thing, same size, but it gives you extra big body. So you can run heavy personnel with your tight ends in there. Barry Lunny Jr., the offensive coordinator for UTSA. UTSA brought 24 starters back from their team last year, virtually intact. Pitch to Sincere McCormick on second and short. He's brought down at the 45-yard line by Antoine Kincaid, a yard short of the sticks. And this is this is a great decision by McCormick. Understands he's not going to get the first down, but he did get every inch he could get. Third and short and on the plunge, Harris picks up the first down. Great get off by that offensive line. Great surge. And you see Harris very confident. It's right off the left side for the easy pickup. So a quick strike drive for UTSA to begin the game. Three plays, 75 yards. A more methodical approach here on first and 10 with the ball near midfield. Franklin, the motion man. Harris into Western Kentucky territory, and he skirts out of bounds at the 45. The reason this is so difficult for defense is because when he pulls off of the zone read and starts running downhill, if you commit to him as a defensive back or as an outside backer that's covering someone, he's going to throw it to that person. He's looking to throw it. It's an RPO run pass option. He's doing an excellent job reading it. A little bit of pistol here on second and short. Ahofitu Maka is the center. McCormick, physical run, not much, but enough to move the chains. It was Will Ignat got, got the tackle, but a great cut. Had a man in his face, he shows you his quick feet. He is really talented back. I, I liked what you said in the open about he's not just a home run hitter, he does such a good job with just the three, four, five yard runs as well. Here's first and 10. Harris. Pass is wow. caught. A fantastic grab by Joshua Cephas. Ball's a little low, but man, watch the hands on Cephas. I, I, I put the tape on last week and watching this kid. He was special. Looked to be uncoverable to me. He snaps right out of that route. It's just a. 12 yard out and all hands. That is a great job. On second and short up the gut to McCormick. Look how easy he makes this look. Ball beneath his knees, gets right underneath it. I mean, that is, that is very difficult, folks. Not as easy as he just made it look. First and 10 now. It's a really deep wide receiver room for UTSA. It, it really is. A lot of experience, great size. And you, then you throw those big headbangers, tight ends in there. Harris takes another shot in the direction of Dan Dishman, who is knifed down by A.J. Brathwaite. A devastating hit. And Dishman is down on the goal line. There's Frank Harris to check on his tight end. This one just hangs up a little bit too long. If, if he puts this ball on a line, they just run a wheel route. You run a post outside and a wheel with Dishman, and he just hangs it up too long. Safety has too much time to get there. Landed extremely awkward there, but I'm glad his feet got from underneath him when he got hit low there. And that's a good observation looking at the replay said. And Dishman is upright and getting to his feet right now. That's a tough cookie. And a, a gracious round of applause from the fans inside Houchins Smith Stadium. UTSA has traveled 
up from San Antonio. That's such a big part of Jeff Trailer's mission. He's got the culture established here in year two, and looking at where UTSA plays its home games inside the Alamo Dome, he wants to pack that place. Oh, it's extremely loud. I, I did an indoor football game there years ago. 5,000 people sounded like 20, 30, 40,000 people. Here's second and 10 from the 31. Quick release to McCormick in the flat. What a grab by the running back. McCormick keeps that play alive, and he stumbles his way inside the 20. It's an excellent, excellent catch, but it has enough touch on it that he can't handle it. Great job. Sticks the left paw out there, and then a nice cut back inside. And I think this is the next evolution of his game right here, is catching it out of the backfield. He's gotten so much better. Coach Lenny having the confidence to, to really get him involved out of the backfield in different ways. His eighth catch of the season now on first down. He carries it the traditional way for him, and he backs his way to the 15, a gain of three. This defense having to defend a, a lot of grass. No these, kidding. These roadrunners are spreading the field and, and using every inch of it. And that's how you keep defenses off balance. Coach Lenny doing a nice job with his play calling right now. On second down. In the direction of Tyke Ogle. Kellogg! What a catch! Touchdown, UTSA! That's a great throw. And catch. I think he got Halasi again. Size matters, 6-5 on this one. And, I mean, he just throws such a catchable ball. Gets it up high with air, and look at the feet. Both of them inbounds. I mean, that's good on Sundays. Sure. Tyke Ogle Kellogg put one on his head. A couple fantastic touchdown grabs by UTSA. Ogle Kellogg with the second, and DeCorian Clark with the first. Two drives, two touchdowns for the Roadrunners. And to plus this on for another point after try. Automatic. So there's a reason why UTSA is 5-0. They've got some playmakers. All roadrunners so far. They lead 14-3 on the road. Looking to stay unbeaten on the season. Folks, it is time to vote for tonight's fan of the game. Get your phone out. Go to Twitter. At stadium is the handle. Make your pick. Is it fan one, fan two, or fan three? We've got some future Hilltoppers cheerleaders in the crowd tonight. I don't know. I, I don't think you could pick between this trio. That, that's, that's a no-lose situation right there. And a beautiful night here in Bowling Green. Football skies as we bring you back inside Houchins Smith Stadium. UTSA. Off to a hot start, 14-3 over Western Kentucky. First quarter has been a problem for Tyson Helton's Hilltoppers this season. Well, they'll stay the course. We, we've seen them all season long just continue to battle. They've got to find some ways to, to get some stops on defense. But Good starting field position here after another great return by Beanie Bishop out across the 40 to the 42. Well, we mentioned the connection between Houston Baptist and Western Kentucky. This is the fearsome foursome of players plus Zach Kitley, the offensive coordinator, that all made the trek from Houston to Bowling Green in the offseason. After Western Kentucky's passing attack was ranked 112th in the nation last year, it kept Tyson Helton up at night. He literally couldn't sleep. He was scrolling through his phone. He came across Zach Kitley's contact information, put some feelers out there, and... They linked up and are here in Bowling Green. Here's Zappi on the run on first down and a gorgeous catch made running out of bounds by Daywood Davis. That's a first down for Western Kentucky. And this shows you his maturity here. He had a double move route. They faked a, a quick slant and go up top. He didn't like the look. Bought some time, found another receiver. Kitley's got an interesting background. His dad is the track and field coach at Texas Tech. He played basketball found himself as a football coach running the offense for Western Kentucky. Carry on first down by Noah Whittington, who runs between the tackles. One of Kitley's heroes, by the way, is Cliff Kingsbury. 
He mentored Kitley as a volunteer assistant on Texas Tech staff. And look at that. That's Patrick Mahomes, who Kitley had the chance to work with in Lubbock. Beautiful throw downfield in the direction of Mitchell Tinsley, but the pass was broken up by Ken Robinson. This is a great, great job of fighting through the play by Robinson. Not giving up. See him strike his hands right between his arms and keep ripping at the ball. That's a nice play right there. Great technique by Robinson. Slows Western Kentucky's roll a little bit. It's third down and one. Hilltoppers special teams have kept them in the game so far in the first quarter. Two great kick returns by Beanie Bishop. Keep an eye on Clarence Hicks, number nine for UTSA, looking to rush off the edge and Western Kentucky perhaps in response to that calls a timeout with 404 left in the first 14-3 UTSA over Western Kentucky in this primetime conference USA showdown and next Saturday on stadium it's another college football doubleheader first at 330 Eastern from Conference USA, it's UAB versus Southern Miss. Then at 7.30 Eastern, we head out to some Mountain West action. Colorado State travels to New Mexico Stadium. Welcome to the game. UAB and Colorado State with pretty big wins today, Seth. Very, very good wins, especially for Colorado State. San Jose State coming back off a magical year a year ago. And UAB's kind of been that team in the West Division, Conference USA, to, to, to dominate. I mean... Florida Atlantic thought they had a shot. UTSA has certainly gotten on everyone's radar based on their 5-0 start to the season. They're getting votes in the top 25 as well. Big third and one here. And on the ground, ball was carried by Adam Cofield, the graduate senior from Lee Summit, Missouri. And he moves the sticks for Western Kentucky. And boy, did he ever move the sticks with some physicality, right? He ran in there extremely tough. Wasn't trying to dance and mess around. He was trying to get the first down. Great job by him to bury his nose in there and get it. Big drive for Western Kentucky here down 14 to 3. First and 10 from the 35. Back to Cofield, who slips into the second level and picks up eight. Cofield's got a championship pedigree. He's got FBS national titles at North Dakota State, that dynasty for the Bison. Played with Trey Lance, who's going to make a start for the 49ers tomorrow. Yeah, and what, a, what a terrific program that is. And they, they, they still do a great job and on that uh, FCS level and dominant, dominant. After a one-yard gain, it's third down and one for Western Kentucky. Cofield still in the backfield to the left of Zappi. And, and everyone wants to know, why aren't, why aren't they throwing the ball? Well, you've got five guys in the box. You, you've got to run it. Bubble screen to Jareth Stearns, and he picks up a Western Kentucky first down before he's rushed out by Antonio Parks. And that's an extension of the running game, but, you know, you want to see ba Bailey Zappi throw the ball around the yard, but when you're dropping eight and bringing three only, it, it makes it tough. You just got to be patient. And I think they're doing a nice job. Coach Kitley's doing a great job of that right now. Staying patient, allowing the offense to come, not trying to rush. Yeah, cliche, but take what the other team gives you. 2.19 to go in the first, and a timeout UTSA. Timeout. UTSA. That is their first charge timeout of the first half. Western Kentucky is asking Bailey Zappi to do a lot. Tyson Helton called him a top five quarterback in college football. He's making NFL reads, asking to survey the entire field, pick up blitz packages. Set the protections. I mean, he's doing literally everything. And they're actually called by the center, Maka, but he's, a, excuse me, not Maska, but Stats. Stats, he's able to, to change it when he needs to. So here are the active career passing leaders, and this is all college football divisions, FPS and FCS, and there's Zappi at the top of the list, over 11,700 career yards. Threw for over 10,000 in his career at Houston Baptist. He played just four games last season because of the COVID shortened year, and he still threw for over 1,800 yards. Yeah, it's, he just has such an understanding for the offense. 
And and that's the biggest thing. You, you try to impress upon young players. If you know what you're doing, you can go extremely fast and have a ton of success if you know what you're doing. He fully grasps what he's doing out there. Swing pass to Noah Whittington, the running back. And he's bumped out along the sideline by Tariq Woolen. Brings up second down. Great job picking up just a little short swing, tunnel screen outside. Physical run. These roadrunners pack some thunder when they come to attack you. Zappi on the crossing route. He finds his tight end, Joey Belgian, the redshirt sophomore from New Jersey. Tackle made by Ken Robinson. Love the way he's just playing. Again, I can't reiterate it because I'm, I'm starting to get impatient. I want him to take a shot. He is so patient right now and just kind of going through his progressions, letting it all come to you. And then you see him right now where you've got three matched up outside, one on one. You got shots. Free play as Dadrian Taylor tried to jump the snap count and was badly offside. Mitchell Tinsley caught the pass anyway. Well, they were bringing pressure. Offside, defense, number one, in the neutral zone at the snap. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is the first down. They're bringing pressure. He knows he has a free play here, but look at this ball outside. Great finish. We don't just want the penalty. We want the catch in the yards. That's a great job of concentrating, finishing the play with distraction. There was a lot of distraction on that catch. <laughs> Man, first and goal now for Zappi in Western Kentucky. Pitch play, and it's snuffed out by UTSA. Tackle made by Brandon Brown. Big man in the middle, yeah, and that this, play went nowhere. Again, this is their strength, and they try to run the fake toss and shovel pass inside to the tight end right there. Great read, and the reason it's a shovel pass is so it can't be fumbled. It's a pass. That's a great job. Great recognition by Brandon Brown inside. Quartet of wide receivers on second and goal. It's Jarrett Stearns into the end zone. On a well-executed wide receiver screen, Stearns with his sixth touchdown of the season. This is an excellent job. And, and Coach Kittley talked about the receivers have to block for each other. In this offense, if you don't block for each other, you're not getting on the field. And down here in the red zone, it's as tough as it gets to, to put a hat on a defender. All three of the guys did a nice job down there helping Stearns get in the end zone. Narvison for the point after try. Fourteen ten ball game. This is such an underrated job right here. Two, three. You got another man down on the ground there. I mean, this is just an outstanding job by the Hilltoppers outside. I mean, look at that technique. That's a great job. And they emphasize that here at, the, at Western Kentucky. If you don't block as receivers, <laughs> you can't get on the field. I think that's a great point. I important to remember that this air raid attack that, that everybody hears so much about, it's not just chuck the ball downfield every play. There's a lot of nuance to this offense. A lot of nuance and, and a lot of patience, right? You're going to take completions, and they, and they always say, like, you see some guys with 60, 60 attempts in a game, right? But some of those attempts are bubble screens. You're getting the ball out quick. You're just running the unders off of mesh. I mean, it's it's a great offense. You just have to be patient, and you need dudes to run it. The Hilltoppers have dudes. Zappy's a dude, <laughs> yeah. Munson with the boot. Caught by Dadrian Taylor for the touchback. UTSA ball at the 25 final minute of the first quarter. UTSA is two for two on touchdown drives in the ball game. Let's see if Frank Harris can keep his hot hot play going and Frank Harris has taken a great leap forward in his development as a college football player now a senior from Shirts Texas Jeff trailer said it comes down to trust he has learned to trust what this coaching staff is that, that doing is for him. so important Chris 
Uh, new staff in for him. You know, he didn't really know, kind of fought it a little bit last year. He is all in, and it's really showing with the way he's playing. Sincere McCormick off tackle, and he runs into a brick wall in the form of Omari Alexander. One yard gain at second and nine. Yeah, had a little help from his friend D'Angelo Malone on the other side as well. This defense, you know, they've been much maligned over the last couple weeks, giving up points. But they still play extremely tough, physical. That's to Corian Clark, tackled out of bounds near the 30-yard line by LaShawn Terrell. Well, Adre Brathwaite has to stop that play right there. He, he does a nice job of dissecting it mentally, but he's got to get the big fella on the ground. Shoot your shot. Don't let him go get extra <laughs> yards. And that is going to do it for the first quarter. And we expected a lot of offense in this game going in, and, and really both of these teams have delivered. And said, look at the completion percentages for both quarterbacks. Frank Harris has missed just once. Bailey Zappi only twice. I mean, it's it's awesome. That's why I'm about to shed a tear up here. A Former clean, quarterback, a, yeah. A clean quarterback play. <laughs> we don't get to see that very often. <laughs> well, you have a special bond with Frank Harris as a, as a fellow southpaw too, right? A absolutely, absolutely. Third down and five for UTSA. Western Kentucky trying to get off the field here defensively. Harris through the hands of Trayvon Bradley, and it's fourth down. It well, looked like he didn't get his hands up quick enough coming out of the break there. Ball a little bit high, but when you snap your head on those slant routes, you have to be ready, eyes up, hands up, ready to catch the ball. So Lucas Dean makes his debut in this game. Dean, a preseason All-American in the 2020 Conference USA Spe Special Teams Player of the Year, kicking in the direction of Jareth Stearns for Western Kentucky, a line drive kick from the Australian, and Stearns cleared the first wave and is tackled at the 25. So offense versus defense, we think. UTSA really good on the ground defensively, but Western Kentucky puts up all kinds of numbers through the air. Interesting dynamic to see how it's going to play out over the final three quarters. Absolutely, and I, I think the biggest thing is is making adjustments. Roadrunners, you see them going with a three-man line, dropping eight guys back. Yeah. And, you know, Western Kentucky, Coach Kittley doing a nice job of saying, well, okay, you want to give us four or five yards of pop from the run game? We'll take it. Noah Whittington, the tailback, on first and 10 from the 26. And there's the seven, eight, nine yards that UTSA concedes. Tackle made by Jalal Sam. Such a patient, patient, patient game plan. I mean, it's it takes a lot to do this. You're coming in here riding high. You're averaging 434 yards passing. Second and short. UTSA brings four that time. Zappi runs for the first down. Scampers out at the 38. It's a great decision. It's just so he can do that too. Yeah, yeah. it's comfortable. It's just, I mean, what are you going to stop with him when he has the ability to do that? You're playing, playing man, two, two man, and you're Underneath coverage is running with their backs turned. Fresh set of downs for the toppers with the chrome domes tonight. Zappi guns it. Pass is caught. Davis at midfield. Simple curl route. Great job finding a hole inside. But what I love about Zappi's eyes here, in his drop, he works left to right just to kind of hold safeties and keep them out of the way, keep them out of the fray. He's got great eye discipline and shows that on just about every play. First downs on back-to-back -back plays for Western Kentucky. Ball at midfield. Jareth Stearns. Watch his head here. He wants to keep the keep the safety out of the play. He gets in the lean inside just a little bit. And there he's able to snap it back and find that window. I mean, eye discipline. A veteran player, 40 starts in the 
41 now under his belt. Uh, fantastic player. You see a guy like Justin Herbert doing that on Monday Night Football you know, at the NFL level. That's advanced stuff for Zappi. Second and short. Western Kentucky has not led in the game. Pass complete. And another first down for Western Kentucky. It's Malachi Corley, the freshman. So brilliant here. You motion, motion your receiver stern to the round. He, he pretends to be or acts like he's the tailback. And then you just run a stick. You bring your guy down inside, sit him down. You've got the option to throw the stick route inside or just run the swing route. Accurate delivery. It happens too fast for the defense to do anything. Air raid attack content to dink and dunk on first and 10. It's Adam Cofield up the middle. And another good gain on first down for the ground and pound of Western Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> That's an oxymoron, but it's <laughs> happening. But it's happening. I, I haven't heard any air raid sirens tonight. That's for sure. Second down, back to Cofield. And UTSA, I mean, they weren't even, there was a couple players not even in their stances before that ball was snapped. And the Hilltop is not allowing them to sub anybody. They're, they're going. First and 10 out of the hurry up. Pass incomplete in the direction of Jarrett Stearns, but there's a flag on the play. Corey Mayfield Jr. in coverage. Preliminary indication is defensive holding. Kevin Randall is our referee tonight. That flag came from the back judge, Sean Woodson. Holding. Defense, number four. That 10 yard penalty will be enforced from the previous That's spot. on the other side of the field. There's an automatic first down. So Mayfield's play was, was spot on. It had to be on the other side of the field somewhere. Antonio Parks, the guilty party. Yeah, it's, it's tough to get when you get these safeties matched up and some of these receivers with their quickness. First and goal, Dalvin Smith, the motion man. Cofield plants his foot, keeps his knees off the ground. He's in his third touchdown of the season. Wow. Bit of a bear crawl for that, Cofield there. Good stuff. I mean, just the, the balance. I would have probably fell on my face at about the <laughs> three and a half yard line. But he's able to keep his knees off the ground, elbows off the ground, and just the low center of gravity. But watch the cuts he makes when we get a look at this thing. He is so quick in tight spaces. Narvison's point after try is good, and Western Kentucky has its first lead of the game. Cofield on the ground. Yeah, Western Kentucky can score that way, too. Toppers lead in the second. Fans, get your phones out. Have your cameras ready. It's time to vote again, this time for which school has the most spirited fan base. We've got a QR code coming up in just a second. So scan that QR code when you see it to make your pick. Is it UTSA or Western Kentucky? There's the QR code. Scan it and let us know. Said, do, uh, do Android phones scan QR codes? Or? Wow. <laughs> Wow, you went there on me because I'm an old guy and I have an Android. Yes, we have QN, QR scanner codes. We do. That's good. I'm glad. I, I could show it to you. I mean, <laughs> man, I'm not exactly Barney Rubble or Fred Flintstone here, pal. Uh, you, you're, doing, you're doing great, and you're a great sport. Thank you for letting me give you a hard time. I appreciate it. How about this? Western Kentucky, with its first lead in a game, since the first week of the season against UT Martin, only game that Western Kentucky has won this year. Now, the schedule has been very difficult. They've played two Big Ten teams. They lost to Army, which is maybe one of the difficult, most difficult scouts for any other team in the country. But a lead now for Western Kentucky, and we'll see what they do with it. UTSA football at the 25. See if they can get off the field defensively again. 
and keep this momentum going. Frank Harris on the slant. Franklin's got it at the 30. Tackled by Beanie Bishop, a five-yard gain, second down. That's a dual scrant, a slant a screen there. He had one up to the top. He motioned his big tight end out wide. Chose to come down here to the RPO slant route instead of throwing the screen up top. Give up the middle and a big run for UTSA. It's B.J. Daniels. This didn't get off to a great start. You see the QB go down, but great footwork for the big man. First carry of the night for B.J. Daniels, who's elevated on the depth chart tonight. His second carry gets him close to the 50-yard line, second down and a long five coming up. And running, running with some power. Yeah. Combat some size with some size and let him go at him. 210 pounds. Doing a nice job running hard and physical. Brendan Brady is the second string running back typically for UTSA. Not available tonight. Daniels making the most of his opportunity. Second and five. Harris pass complete to Cephas. The junior from Spring, Texas has a UTSA first down. Really good throw and catch, but none of that happens without B.J. Daniels and pass pro here. This is an excellent job by the tailback to step up and pick up the blitz and backer outside. Stonewalls him, allows his quarterback to step into a nice throw. That's a great job. Sincere McCormick back on the field. Fresh set of downs for the Roadrunners. Two tight ends set. And McCormick breaks into the secondary. He got lost in the cloud there, and next thing you knew, it was a 15-yard gain. Kincaid saves the touchdown. This, this is just counter GT, and you're going to pull the guard and tackle from the other side, and he's going to follow it. It's, it's so, he has such a knack of just kind of following his blockers and doing a nice job of being patient behind them. First and 10. McCormick leads Conference USA in rush yards this season. He stretches it off left tackle that time. Well, just outside zone here. And here we go, GT. See the guard tackle pull, and he just kind of hides off the tackle's inside hip, and they lose him. Not a guy you want to lose. He can explode out of there and hurt you. There are a couple all-conference offensive linemen on the field for UTSA. They're without maybe their best offensive lineman. Guard Kevin Davis is injured. Second down and eight. That's Cephas in the slot, bottom of your screen. First season in the slot for UTSA. Harris, end zone. Franklin dropped it. It should have been offensive pass interference. He got away with a shove there. Right, right there. Oh, that's huge. They all thought he scored there. <laughs> Realized that it hit the deck, but great throw. Third down and eight. Into the flat. Cephas back to Harris. Harris has got some cavalry in front of him. Touchdown, UTSA. Wow. What a call this is. By Coach Lonnie, what a call. A throwback screen to your quarterback. And the Calvary was ready. I mean, it's one thing to practice these plays, but for it to for you to pull it off the way they just did, that was awesome. So Frank Harris now has, of course, a passing touchdown. He's also got a rushing touchdown and a receiving touchdown. Triple threat. UTSA back in front. Duplessis makes it 21-17. From the bag of tricks, well, it is October. Trick or treat. Trick for UTSA and a treat for the Roadrunners. Touchdown on the gimme play.
Welcome back to Western Kentucky. The Roadrunners retake the lead, and let's watch this theater production right here by the entire offensive line on this throwback screen. That's a burpee throwback screen right there. They just did burpees in the middle of a football game. And it counted for six. I mean, McCormick outside doing his best to keep him away from Cephas. And then, Chris, as you mentioned, that's one of the hardest throws. You got a guy sitting out there wide open, and he makes an accurate throw. Beautifully designed play. Beanie Bishop's got a couple of good returns tonight for Western Kentucky. That time he is met and dropped by a cluster of white jerseys across the 15-yard line. Frank Harris, 11 for 14, a buck 45 through the air, and two touchdowns, including a 23-yard touchdown reception, I guess plus a 23-yard touchdown reception. He's making an early case for wanting to be player of the week. Well, hold on. Right? Still, I mean... Look at number four in I, red. I, we got a lot of time. That's right. Like I said, these two guys are playing on a whole different level. Very clean. I think it's going to come down to whoever has the ball last tonight. First and 10 Western Kentucky to start this drive at the 18. Whittington with a burst around the edge. Got the corner. And was tripped up by Jamal Sam going out of bounds. Yeah, you're so so worried about the 441 yards per game that they're throwing for each week. You're, all week, you want to make sure you cover every little angle in that passing game. Well, you forget they have collegiate running backs on the other side as well. And they're coming out doing a nice job of being patient and running the football. On first and 10. Right up the gut one more time. Minimal gain that time by Whittington. And what you do by continuing to just be patient running the ball, you're going to start sucking those safeties up, getting some guys wanting to be a little aggressive on the other side, a little nosy. And that's when you can take your shots. Second and seven, UTSA with... 77 yards allowed on the ground to Western Kentucky. That's already higher than the Roadrunners season average. Jarrett Stearns with the catch out of the backfield brought down at the 35 by Parks. Third down and short. So tough to stop. You've got five, four receivers there and you throw the swing route to the motion man and you're gonna get positive yards. Got man-to-man -man opportunity up top. Pressure coming off the edge up top as well. Give to Robichaux on third down. He's got the first across the 40 to the 42. I mean, clean and, and efficient offense is just that. And they're, they're doing a great job. Off and then I talk them into a drop. Uh, that, that's all right. <laughs> I'll let it slide. Malachi Corley with the drop pass was a little bit behind. That gives UTSA some time to cycle in a new line of D linemen. Tyson Helton has got some past experience in the air raid attack. He coached as an assistant under June Jones at Hawaii. Bailey Zappi with time. Complete to Davis into UTSA territory and a yard past the first down marker. This is a good job by the offensive line, allowing him to, to keep clean, but his just presence and feel, right? Watch him, watch him move around and just kind of slide, subtly slide and stay back because he wants to deliver the ball. Excellent job. Mitchell Tinsley in the flat is pushed out of bounds by Kalechi Wachuku. Western Kentucky picking up the tempo a little bit here. It's second down coming up. And four on the play, second down and six. Changing the personnel groupings. 
Coming back with 11 personnel. Second down and six. Smith jogs behind the line. Robichaux. Bumps and nudges his way forward for a Western Kentucky first down. Another hard run by the freshman from Columbus, Georgia. And listen, this is a, a, a team in, in UTSA that's given up 72 yards rushing a game. All right, so they, and yeah, they're way over that. There. Houston, we got a problem. 93 yards on the ground for Western Kentucky's offense so far and one touchdown. It's been Whittington, Robichaux, Cofield splitting the carries out of the backfield. And all running extremely hard. First and 10, ball inside the 35. Zappi, wide open Dalvin Smith, touchdown Hilltoppers. Western Kentucky's first play from scrimmage was a 33-yard pass. That was about a 33-yard touchdown. There was the shot that Western Kentucky's offense was waiting to take. That was a great-looking play, great design. And I tell you what, Bailey Zappi, when he has time and, and understands where he's going with the ball as this thing is put in there, but quick play fake and he gets the ball down the seam as well as anybody touchdown tops welcome back hilltoppers back on top let's take a look at how this happens we get one player to leave his post his position dalvin smith does a nice job coming down in motion and watch his little subtle little stem here when he comes out of the backfield like he's going to go block and then he goes straight up to hash well designed you get a vertical stretch outside stretch and bailey excited and dealing and kitley with his six foot seven self that's right <laughs> good Im lord he's so tall important to remember we showed that picture where he was dwarfing <laughs> patrick mahomes <laughs> earlier On the kickoff by Munson. Adrian Taylor waves for a fair catch. Stadium brings you the best of high school football every week. This week on Friday Night Rivals from Tennessee, Riverdale visits undefeated Oakland. Kick is at 8 p.m. Eastern. Stadium, welcome to the game. Look at the drive chart for Western Kentucky. They have not punted tonight. Field goal and three straight touchdowns. UTSA has the game's only punt so far, but it has been back and forth after UTSA grabbed a 14-3 lead. It's been touchdown drive after touchdown drive. Fun start to this game, 4.47 to go until half. First and 10, UTSA from its own 25. On the toss to Joshua Cephas, he wheels around the end and is pushed out of bounds by Demetrius Kane, the linebacker. Minimal gain of two there, but again, trying to force the toppers to play both sides of the field, link to link, end to end, cover everything. Second and eight. Harris claps his hands and feeds McCormick, who stays on his feet and is finally chopped down by Bishop at the 40. This is such a great cut right here. But he has a balance and he spins around and right there, if he just gets one more block, he's taking it the distance. Harris guns that one incomplete at the feet of Franklin. Yeah, he took the more difficult throw. He had Cephas right over the middle. He had wrapped around the linebacker sitting right in front of him for an easy completion. And that's a difficult throw to throw that hash to out throw 10 yards and beyond. A lot of arm strength required for a throw like that. Here's second and 10. Harris steps up, dropped the football, a fortuitous bounce, and Harris makes lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> uh, 
And I can just imagine Coach Trailer ball security when you come out of there, but I mean, he's dribbling it, Steph Curry style, down the field. <laughs> and then is able to still get a couple yards. Fortuitous, fortuitous is the magic word on that one, because that could have ended poorly. Third down as McCormick comes into the backfield. Harris with time, low throw dropped. Tyke Ogle Kellogg, who caught his first touchdown of the season earlier in the game, couldn't hang on, and it's fourth down. They're going to leave the offense out, at least for the moment. That's that's a throw you've got to make, especially when you're playing as well as you're playing. You got to make that throw. Can't make a six-five guy go down below his knees to make a catch when he's standing in space. What do you think of the decision to leave the offense out on the field? Well, I'm thinking maybe hard count, maybe you freeze him, see if you can get him to jump off sides. I'm not sure they will run a play. They do well, on they do. fourth and seven. Instant pressure. Harris needs midfield. He's got it. Wow. Some magic for Frank Harris looking like Michael Vick back there. <laughs> Just a tremendous effort. I mean, he looked to be hemmed in at the top of that, but was able to spin out. Shows you his athleticism. And just understanding where he needed to get. <laughs> what do you mean they were thinking about punting? Jeff Trailers saying at us, of course we were going to go for it. First and 10. McCormick, the running back. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line, pushed out by Alexander. Watch this, he spins out, then he splits the defenders. Oh, I'm gonna cut back on you two and then go there. There's a 50, I need that, then I'll slide past 50. He is fleet-footed. And looking very healthy, too. He's yep. undergone knee and shoulder injuries in his career. This is the healthiest he's ever been in college. Second and one. McCormick finishes what he started, picking up the first down. And he's tackled at the 35. We're getting this heavy personnel, and I you shouldn't even call it heavy, but they're they're going 12 right, 12 personnel with their two tight ends, Leroy Watson and Cardenas. Both of those guys are 275 pounds, so that's like having extra offensive tackles out there. And they call it heavy for a reason. First and 10, Western Kentucky brings four. Strike delivered over the middle. And the catch is made by Zakari Franklin. They just, they just run YH mesh with the two big tight ends, the 275-pound tackles. What's YH they, mesh? That's those two positions, <laughs> right? The two big fellas, and they run cross routes, and then you throw the curl in between them. So they're not just blockers. They're going to sit them out on routes as well. Second down and one. B.J. Daniels in the backfield. And the pass is batted down and intercepted. It's A.J. Brathwaite off the deflection, it. and he fumbles oh. it. Oh. A crazy play. Will Ignat batted the pass into the air. It was caught by Brathwaite, and then he dropped it. Oh, man, this is heartbreaking. The ruling on the field is an interception by the defense. And then an ensuing fumble. The offense, UTSA, recovered that fumble. It will be first and 10. And Kari Franklin's able to get it. But Ignat is the one who batted it down in the right place at the right time. Look at Frank Harris absolutely tomahawk chopped that, chopped that thing out yeah. of there. And it's a fresh set of downs for UTSA, although they effectively use field position, lose field position to the 32. Franklin with the catch on first down. He stays in bounds. Well, that's okay. You're you're inside inside the 30. Under a minute. You you don't want to leave too much time for, for Zappi in this offense. Second and six. Franklin. Off a block, stiff arm, tackled at the 10. 
Yeah, and Zakari on that play there, he got great help from his offensive line running downfield, but he needs to understand and make sure you get enough yards and get out of bounds for sure. They marked him out. Or no, they didn't mark him out. But an injured player for the Roadrunners, it's the right guard, Terrell Haynes, who is really a left guard by trade, but with Kevin Davis out of the lineup, Haynes shifted over to right guard last week in the win against UNLV. And there could be no more valuable thing than a versatile group of guys up front. Yeah. Guys that can two, three, four of your guys can snap. They can all move, rotate, move around, play outside, inside. That's precious. And welcome back, Zakari Franklin here on the quick screen. I'm going to reward you for picking up that fumble, but look at this move and the stiff arm on the big fella outside. Trying to get him back involved in this offense. Tremendously talented guy. Game time decision and I didn't even know if we were going to be able to see him. And I, I tell you what, looking at him on the field before the game, he was limping a little bit, and he's toughing it out tonight. He has caught a pass in every game timeout. of his career. This is his 24th game. That is the game. second charge timeout of the first half. And Frank Harris, you know, we, we said, okay, he's got a receiving touchdown. Now he's he's stepping over onto the defensive side of the field with a forced fumble forced. tonight. <laughs> How about that stat line? I know. I've never <laughs> seen that. QB. That is. And it wasn't by accident. He, he literally punched that ball yeah, out of there. He, he went Charles Tillman on him. <laughs> Old Peanut Tillman. That's right. Peanut Punch. Please reset the game clock to 43 seconds. So UTSA had to burn a timeout because of the injured player. To avoid the 10-second runoff. Yes. Correct. And there are 43 seconds left until halftime. UTSA has the ball at the 11-yard line. It is first down and 10. I haven't seen a ton of Joshua Cephas. Is the whole playbook open in this situation? Uh, absolutely. Would you would you run to McCormick? One timeout left. You could do that. You know, the, up front, the D line is very long. They've got Makai Hart, a right tackle, split wide of the formation into the end zone. Cardenas with the touchdown for UTSA. And Barry Lunny Jr. dials up another crazy play. He is doing a great job of dialing it up. And we talked about those big tight ends that look like tackles out there. That, maybe that's a, a case of misidentification. They don't understand who he is or what he was. <laughs> But, man, was he wide open. I was just like, please, for the love of God, don't drop that ball. Right. <laughs> like, I, mean, I mean, you get, get an opportunity out here, and he is right here, lined up. And just watch what he does. He comes out. He doesn't hide it, doesn't fake it. Like, it's just a tight end go route or leak. I mean... That's what happens when you get your eyes in the wrong spot, yep. right? Well, hey, I, I sympathize with Western Kentucky there. They had a right tackle lined up as a wide receiver. I mean, <laughs> that was a crazy play formation. And it ends with an Oscar Cardenas touchdown, his first of the season. And it has been a really fun showdown. Battle of the brains, Jeff Trailer and his staff, Tyson Helton, and Western Kentucky's coaching staff. I mean, this, this has been fun offensive football. It's been outstanding. Now, uh, defensive coaches are going to hate that. But it's been great play calls and great execution of offense. Like, that's, that's fun. And I, I would totally expect Western Kentucky to try and score before halftime. Two timeouts left, 40 seconds. And Bailey Zappi, your quarterback? Why not? Awesome. All right, fans. 
Campus Insiders, your place for the latest news and information in college football. Cam Smith, Michael Felder, and Matt Fortuna give insight on the landscape of college football every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern. Stadium, welcome to the game. Bailey Zappi tries to march Western Kentucky 75 yards downfield in 40 seconds. Two timeouts for the toppers. Adam Cofield in the background and a diamond formation up top on first and 10. If things stay the way they are right now, it will literally be the last man with the ball to win this game. Cofield on the ground is wrapped up by Rashad Wisdom around the 33. They just used their Timeout. first, WKU. or second, excuse that me. That is their second. It will be 30 seconds. Usually, usually on those on those first plays, you want to see if you can break a good gainer to see see what you're doing, and you know that's not a bad gain. You're, you can stop the clock with a with a with a one yard run. Pick up the first down. You could stop it while they move the chains, and then maybe call two plays in the huddle. Right, get that quick dive in there, and have the next play ready to go. And maybe you want to take a shot with one of your guys out here, one of your receivers, Stearns, or one of these guys, Corley. Take Tinsley. your pick. Absolutely. Tinsley. I mean, we just go down the list. Big menu. Bailey Zappi, 16 for 19. And that, I think, is the part about his game that might get lost in the shuffle, just how efficient and accurate he is. Get mesmerized by the numbers. But here's a second and one with Cofield in the background. Zappi in trouble, and UTSA hits the mark. Brandon Matterson. With some help from Trumaine Bell and an injured Western Kentucky lineman. It looks like Mason Brooks. Right tackle. I mean, those guys, those bigs go through so much day in and day out. Not even just game day, but just on a daily basis. The kind of battles they endure. And these offensive linemen have to be exceptionally well conditioned to run this kind timeout. of offense. WKU, that is their third charge timeout. Please reset the game clock to 30 seconds. Western Kentucky out of timeouts. And Brooks is still in the huddle. Well, they took a timeout. And now he's able to stay in the game. But he may have just gotten rolled up on. Yeah, they're going to take him off the field, it looks like. Although, no, now he pivots and comes back. Junior from Cedar Park, Texas. It's been a tough physical game for both sides. There have been some big hits, and this has been a lot of fun to watch. 30 seconds to go. Until halftime beneath a crescent moon in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Tyson Helton is talking with Kevin Randall, the referee tonight, and the line judge, Derek Ralser. Brooks does come off the field. Third down, lobbed over the middle. It's Dalvin Smith who gets out of bounds across the 35. First down, Western Kentucky. Well, well designed play. This is a form of a, a screen, right? You, you run a guy on an under route, your receiver's on this side, near side, right in front of us, go upfield and block. So they're not even expecting to get, get a ball thrown to them. They're going up to block, you catch, get out of bounds, and you keep it moving. 24 seconds, but Western Kentucky out of timeouts and the ball at the 37. Zappy over the middle. Jarrett Stearns into UTSA territory. That stops the clock to move the chains. Well, you don't clock yet. You, you call a play and you have, have a couple called. From the 44, timeout. UTSA. And that's what the air raid can do to a defense and speed you up, tire you out, prevent Come you out. from getting your 
UTSA. right personnel on the field. That is their third and final yeah, this, timeout. This really Please nice throw here on the middle read route. He finds him coming right down between the backers. Great job by Stearns to, to split those guys equally, give them plenty of space to throw. And you see how quick they're up and ready to go. 17 seconds left after a 19-yard gain to the UTSA 44. So right here, you're going to probably get two play calls in the huddle. Unless, unless you get something going towards the sideline somewhere, getting out of bounds. But you're, you're most likely going to get two calls in the huddle because with 17 seconds, you can get two, two off. Unless you get a big one and then you just want to clock it and then take a shot or get a field goal. Braden Narvison is the kicker for Western Kentucky, an Iowa State transfer, and he has made 13 straight kicks. That's pretty good. That's a, a running <laughs> record for Western Kentucky. And he might be asked to extend it before halftime. That's, you know, if Justin Tucker could make a 66-yarder, why not Braden Narvison? You, you know, the funny thing about that is the week after that in Denver, those guys were practicing from 70 oh, yeah. on game day. Practicing on in the warm-ups. Come on. That's nuts. Titanium leg. First down, Bailey Zappi. He was hit as he threw. And the ball is squibbed incomplete. That, that was not blown dead, so it was ruled a fumble on the field, and UTSA takes it back to the house. There was no whistle, and Tariq Woolen goes into the end zone. It sure looked like the arm was moving sure forward for Bailey Zappi. But credit UTSA for playing it like it was live, because it was. It was not blown dead. Yeah, this play is under further review. They can always review it, but don't ever make them blow the whistle and stop it. You know what I mean? Yes. Great Just point. Just go run through it. Make it. Make them make this call. Right? So he starts to go back. That's a throw. That's a throw. Charles Wiley with the hit. I think you hit the nail on the head, though, partner. Yeah. Let it play and, and let, let the replay officials do their work. Everyone wearing red inside Houchin Smith Stadium disagrees with that. But this will all get sorted out. Talk to Randy Smith and Rod Johnstone, our replay officials, before the game. And all right, Coach Hamby giving his old line a... A little bit of a talking to down there. Pressure for UTSA has not been a factor until really this drive. Well, be, because they've been, been able to keep them off balance, right? And now when you've got to drop back and maybe hold it for a tick longer, now those big athletic After ends. After review, the ruling on the field has been overturned. The quarterback had possession of the ball as his arm came forward. By rule, that is an incomplete pass. It will be second down at the 44-yard line, and the clock will start on the snap. Yeah, I mean, it's even still got a spiral on it. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a slow spiral. It's kind of a knuckleball, but it was still spinning. So that's the right call. Eight seconds to go. And said you've been craving a shot downfield for Western Kentucky, and you might just get it here. Well, it's kind of tough when they're, you know, in their quarters looks. There's guys on each hashes and then on the outside. But there are some pockets. The problem is you have no time. Please reset the game clock to 15 seconds, and the clock will start on the snap. That's an extra play. Now, yes. Now that gives you a little shot. If you can get something down around the first down marker, get the first down, and then you can have a chance to decide if you want to kick a field goal or go for the end zone. Second and 10 at the Roadrunners 44. Zappi with a pass behind and through the hands of Daywood Davis incomplete. And Third look, down. Look at the middle of the field, how wide open it is. They're leaving the middle of the field wide open, so it's going to be 
It's going to come upon those, those inside safeties and anybody tackling in space here because if you get a guy running full tilt at you in space, you got to get him on the ground here. Look how much space there is back there in the middle of that secondary. Rashad Wisdom, actually that's Clarence Hicks chopping at the bit to rush the line in the middle for UTSA. Zappy to the boundary and the pass is complete. What a catch by Davis. It's fourth down here. They got to figure it out. They got a field goal or, or go for it, but they got to figure it out quick. Play clock is should be running. Here comes the field goal unit. This is a 55 yard try for Braden Narvison. Again, he's made 13 straight. This would be a career long. He's hit from 53 for the Hilltoppers. This is two year, two yards beyond that. It's got the length, but it's no good wide right. Ball was struck well, but just not accurate enough. And that gets us to halftime, 28-24. Kind of like the quarterback comparison, the stats between UTSA and Western Kentucky, very similar through the first half. Look at that parody, said. Yeah, it's fantastic. The only thing that jumps out to me is the 95 rushing yards by Western Kentucky. Uh, UTSA has done such a fantastic job just giving up 71 yards a game. So for me, that's, that's the only thing that, that jumps out at me on this graphic right here. I mean, it's been a great game. They played extremely great football, both teams, up to this point. What's the, the quarterback sixth sense that you have telling you about how this second half is going to go? I, I feel like it's going to go much like the first half went. There, there, there's going to be some great scores. These are two high-powered offenses with tons of weapons. As long as somebody doesn't take the car off the rails, they'll be good to go. Western Kentucky's leaders after the Beanie Bishop kick return. Bailey Zappi, 201 yards and two touchdowns through the year. Adam Cofield has been really impressive on the ground, 43 yards and a touchdown. And Jareth Stearns, by his standards, a pretty modest first half. Seven catches, 49 yards, and a touchdown. That's first half. He's That's first half. A lot, of, a lot of game left. Averaging 10 for his career, 10 a game. From the 25 on first and 10, Zappi moves the pocket and delivers a strike. Tackle made out of bounds by Dadrian Taylor on Jareth Stearns, who's got his eighth catch now. And that's the second time he's kind of chucked him out of bounds with, with some force. But again, you're getting that good yardage on first down, five plus yards on first down, and still being patient. Noah Whittington is the tailback on second and five. There's Stearns. Two quick catches. No, incomplete. Beg your pardon. And it's third down. That's such a great throw right there. That's the only spot that ball could win. Clarence Hicks was outside in the flat. And he got it out of his hand so fast and around Clarence Hicks, who's 6'2", covers a lot of ground. Stearns unable to hang on to it. Third and five. UTSA with a chance to get Western Kentucky's air raid attack off the field. And Tyson Helton running down the sideline. Looked like he was maybe going to call a timeout. Here's the play. Whittington! Across midfield, but there's a flag way back in the offensive backfield. Well, that's never, it's usually in the area of holding. Holding. Offense, number 78. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. That's on the left guard, Quantavius yeah, Leslie. Be the freshman. The... Right, right there in the middle. Right. Oh, just a, hangs on and grabs on just a little bit too long, especially when the run's going away. Just move your feet. Let go. At that point, the defender's not going to get there, and I believe it was Lorenzo Danzler. He's not going to get there to make that tackle. 
third and 15. Four-man rush. Zappi guns down the sideline. What a throw to Mitchell Tinsley. There was a flag that was dropped. The official also threw his hat out of bounds, which would indicate perhaps that a, a player ran out of bounds. Just depends if he was forced out of bounds and got right back in, but you want to see a next level throw, folks? Whoa. <laughs> That's a next level throw right there. There's some clutter to sort out, however, on the back end of this play before we can truly celebrate that. Illegal touching. Offense, number five. He went out of bounds on his own and was the first to touch the pass in bounds. The penalty places the ball at the previous spot. Loss of down to be fourth down. You see right here, and I don't know if that's not going out of bounds on his own. He was is under further review. Yeah, he's checked right there, bird 26 out in the flat. I believe it's Mayfield. He's he's pressed or not pressed, but checked out of bounds. And it's it's so interesting. We just had this discussion earlier today with the replay officials. And so there's contact. Look at that throw, though. Wow. <laughs> right over Corey Mayfield, number 26 for UTSA. Okay, well, so watch as he puts hands on and jams. Right, he's he takes two steps, but he gets back in as fast as he can. That's as fast as he can get back in bounds. I know we're really splitting hairs here, but there there was the push. But still, there was the, the two players were separated at the moment Tinsley went out of bounds. That's just why I'm wondering if why they, that's why they said he went out of bounds on his own. It's, it's his job to get as a flat defender. He's his job to get hands on. He technically shouldn't let him outside, but he gets hands on him as he's trying to run. And as we talked about with Randy Smith and Ronnie Johnston earlier, we. It's hard to judge that, right? How much did he get on him? It's hard to judge what's going to affect you when you're running downfield. Tyson Helton has seen back-to-back -back penalties called against his Western Kentucky Hilltoppers that have derailed the opening drive of the third quarter. Western Kentucky at one and three. Trying to start the non trying to start the conference portion of the season, that is, with a win after a very difficult non-conference schedule. And UTSA tries to move to 6-0 for the first time in program history. This, this is a tough one. I don't envy those guys having to make that call. It's a tough call. And I could see it going either way, to be honest with you. And if this is upheld, here we go from After Kevin Randall. Review, the ruling on the field stands. Illegal touching. Offense number five. The ball be placed at the previous spot. Loss of down. It'll be fourth down. Well, he's not running to run to out of bounds, right? He's he's running the run to the outside shoulder of that defender, and that's why I thought possibly, you know, it could be called. However. When he got width away from the defender, that's what took him out of bounds in the minds of the replay officials. And I think you saw. And one, I understand. Yeah, yeah I, I think you saw one, two, three steps out of bounds before he came back in. John Haggerty with the Western Kentucky punt. That's a good one, but a muffed punt, and it's recovered by Western Kentucky. That's a huge turn of events. Wow. Antoine Kincaid with the recovery. On the muff. The ruling on the field is a muff punt recovered by the kicking team. The ball be placed at the spot of recovery. First down. Good. Right. Sheldon Jones with the miscue on the punt return for UTSA and Western Kentucky after all that has first down at the 24. Zappi. 
to the sideline and pushed down by Clarence Hicks. Good decision not to really try to reach out for that collar and pull him down. But Zappi makes another good decision. This is well covered on the back end. They're trying to run a deep over route and then a post. This is well covered as you get a look at the turnovers in the game, and that's number two. Although they got the first one back immediately with the heroic efforts of the quarterback stripping it. Second and ten. Over the middle, behind the intended receiver, that was Josh Stearns, the younger brother of Jareth Stearns, and it's third down and ten. And if there's one area I, I've seen Zappi struggle, throwing down that seam when he really has to get something on it, he kind of gets a little bit open with his front side of his body, so the ball tends to, tends to sail behind the receiver. But that's a minimal thing with his talents. UTSA gets matched up defensively. Adam Cofield is the running back. Zappi over the middle. Malachi Corley. His knee was not down. He's into the end zone, and it's called a touchdown. This is a heads-up play, and then all scores will be reviewed. But heads up to continue on, and Rashad Wisdom puts a nice hit on him, but doesn't get him to the ground, as though it appears, and we'll get a look at it. That is Nothing. unbelievable. Oh, he's like planking. Yeah. He's doing a plank over the top of the defender. And he had the wherewithal to know that he was still alive on the play. And that, that goes to, you don't want to cheap shot a guy when he's in that position, but if you're another defender around, if there's a chance that he could be laying on top of the body, just push him off so he's on the ground. Make sure he don't get a freebie. That's a freebie. And it's Corley's third touchdown of the season. Narvison boots the extra point attempt home, and Western Kentucky grabs a 31-28 lead. What a bizarre drive. A UTSA muff punt gives Bailey Zappi new life. Fans, voting is still open, so if you haven't gotten your phone out and scanned the QR code for which school has the most spirited fan base, you need to do so now. UTSA or Western Kentucky, there's the QR code you need to scan. Listen, not going to give away too much about the results of the polling so far, but Western Kentucky fans, you got to get out and vote. UTSA has apparently got a lot of votes for most spirited fan base of the night. Western Kentucky, still time for you to answer. You were nice. You are really nice about that. I might have been, what, what are you guys doing? You're letting <laughs> your team down. Like, get on them. Trying to be encouraging. Especially now with Western Kentucky ahead, 31-28. Now's really the time to get out and vote. Fan base should be extra spirited. Now, that was just one of our polls tonight, said. We have a winner in our fan of the game poll, and I, this is a total toss-up. Fan one, fan two, fan three. No idea who would win, but the winner is fan number two. Cutie pie in the middle. Did you see who called it? You don't see my you hand called up? It? Uh, Yeah, you're right. You're I've, right. I've had you this two up for like the last five seconds. You called Nostradamus over here. Yes. Maybe got a maybe got a sneak peek at the at the poll results. I'm not sure, but either way, our fan of the game. Congratulations. Not and on my galaxy, by the way. <laughs> First and ten from the 25. Harris throws low, and the pass is caught. That's Zakari Franklin. He's ruled down at the 29-yard line by Ken Robinson. Talk about a gutsy performance. He's just gutting it out. You can see he's not not able to, to really explode off his legs like he would like to, but he is out there giving it everything for his team. Second and six. Harris was looking for Leroy Watson. It wasn't there, and he throws it away. I think he could have come to our near sideline with the screen again. They had the dual screen on, one on each side. And he chose to go to the top. 
had a little more favorable numbers down here right in front of us. That's a spirited sideline for Western Kentucky. Third down here. Man-to-man -man outside. Man-to-man outside. That's Joshua Cephas, who's brought down short of the first down. Marcus Bragg, big tackle from the redshirt junior from North Miami. It's very tempting here to go for this, but wow. they are going to go for it. Inside Ooh, the 35? That's... Fourth and one. Well, UTSA tries to get a fledgling drive going here. Sincere McCormick to tailback and look at Harris under center. Maybe stick something in his belly and boot it. But great drive. McCormick pushes the pile to the 38-yard line, and it's a first down for UTSA. Our roadrunner leaders in the first half. The usual suspects, Frank Harris, Sincere McCormick, and Zakari Franklin. Frank Harris in particular brilliant tonight that was a tough luck interception by the way it was batted and deflected a couple of times he didn't pout though he went and forced it that's forced right the fumble that, and that's <laughs> the key he went and forced the fumble on the guy who picked it off empty backfield for him on first and ten deep shot Clark caught Antoine Kincaid in coverage and UTSA into the red zone. Given their size, giving them chances down the field, good protection up front. And again, he likes, seems to like this matchup down here. You're in no man's land. If you're not pressing and you're within five yards, you're kind of in that gray area. And here it goes again. Back to Clark looking for his second touchdown. He's got it. Beautiful throw and catch from the tandem of Frank Harris and DeCorian Clark. Uh, Brathway just gets himself in it. Or excuse me, Halasi gets himself in, in bad position. You're, if you're going to press, you need to get up and put hands on. But you've given up a couple fades over the top. So get back, get back. And the post here, it's short, but he adjusts, stops, comes back, and makes the play. And then he feels like he has Halasi on a string over here. Goes right at him again. They catch him in man coverage again. And just finished. And look at this. You, you get in within four yards. I mean, look at that throw. Great throw and touch, but... You get within that four-yard mark, and you're not putting hands on somebody, you're you're in no man's land. Within uh -huh. two strides, they're by you. Uh -huh. That's very hard to play that kind of technique. Clark having a monster night. Five grabs, 101 yards, and two touchdowns. The final two plays of that drive for UTSA went 44-yard completion to Clark, a career long, and then he finished the job with an 18-yard reception for his second touchdown. But how, how about Coach Lonnie? Like, that's our dude. Go at him again. Go again, right? Attacking him again. And that's that, that killer mindset where you want to go at a guy if, if you've got a matchup you like. Beanie Bishop on the return. Good blocking, and Bishop breaks it. Oh, he almost broke it outside. A shoestring tackle saves a return. So here's the improvement for Frank Harris. This is what the numbers say, but then there's just an improved relationship between Harris and the coaching staff. That's also big to know. And that's huge. Just be, the, the whole trust issue, and again, new staff, he's already there. You, you've got to build that common ground and, and take some time for players to, to really understand how much you care about them, how much you want them to succeed. He is bought in and he is really thriving right now with Coach Trailer's offensive staff. Drive starts at the 28 for Western Kentucky. Zappi airmails Mitchell Tinsley and it's second down. Try to get a little fade stop. 
on the field side. But, you know, when this team is at its best, it's, it's running quick offense, fast offense. Trying to find those matchups within the middle of the defense. Five wide on second down. Over the middle, Josh Stearns off his fingertips incomplete. And Josh would tell you he needs to make this catch. Arms gets a little short. He may, may have been able to take one more step upfield before he threw his hands. But it's just been just fraction off. Wow. And in Bailey's mind, he's thinking, I need to put that ball on his face, not make him reach up for it, right? He's that kind of competitor, that kind of player. Third and 10. Rusty Stats, the center, calls out the protection. Pass was incomplete. Coverage on the play by Jamal Sam. Jared Stearns was the intended target. It looked like that play could either have gotten picked or caught by Stearns. Right, it was great coverage right there. Good job of really just taking away the option route and basically running the route for him. That was a fantastic job by Sheldon Jones, I believe it was, in the slot. Now there is Sheldon Sticks Jones who muffed the last punt for UTSA. John Haggerty from Sydney, Australia did not punt in the first half. This is his second punt now. Spiraling Ooh. kick, and it is gorgeous. Jones bobbles it, drops it, picks it up at his own five, and Haggerty might have outkicked the coverage. Jones gets all the way back across the 40. Sticks is trying to find, find the coverage team, but look at this bomb. I mean, that is about 72 yards in the air, <laughs> out kicks his coverage. Sticks is looking for a lane. He finally gets loose. But he is having a heck of a time back there tracking the ball and bringing it in. UTSA football with pretty darn good starting field position at its own 43. Watson, the tight end, motion tight to the line. Sincere McCormick with a burst to near midfield before he's wrapped up by Demetrius Kane. There's that steady diet coming. Yeah. Getting this guy involved and his go back with bring another tight end in. Cardenas comes in the ball game. So now you're in 12 personnel with seven offensive linemen out there basically. Jumbo. Sincere McCormick eclipsed the 3,000 yard career rush mark tonight. 60 yards on the evening. Adding to his total. First down and more. Inside the 35. The problem is, even though they've got the two extra bigs out there, the and the H back and the Y, the tight end, you, you still have to respect the passing game because these guys can run routes. They move really well for 275 pound guys. Dancing bears. They, they are. <laughs> Grizzly style. That's right. Ball at the Western Kentucky 35. Pistol set. McCormick with his third straight run. He is tearing off yardage by the right. chunks. And, and now you start to get in a situation where you want to get stopped, so you start bringing inside pressure. You see the gap stun inside, and he beats his guard to the hole and says, I'm not waiting for you to pull, big man. I'm by you and through the lane. Let's go. Local product relative to San Antonio, Judson High School, Converse, Texas. 29 players on this UTSA roster from the San Antonio metro area. On first and 10, Harris takes a shot. Franklin could not haul it in. That's a good finish. This is great finish.
Watch him play through the hands of the receiver. And Zakari, it's a little bit underthrown. But Miguel Edwards competes, and listen. Personal foul, hands to the face, number 23 of the defense. Penalty will be half the distance oh. to the goal. Automatic first down. But this is a killer. When you have these kind of penalties right here. I mean that's a killer when you're when you're trying to get some things going and Will Ignat just gets his hands a little bit too high. But how about young Miguel Edwards getting out there and competing? Sincere McCormick brought down at the six, it's second down. The other good thing about what the Roadrunners are doing with these multiple tight ends here, you still have your outside zone where you could boot and waggle with your quarterback. You've got your slip routes, get them out in the flats. All those things are live for you. Second down, it is not a goal to go situation for UTSA. McCormick. UTSA rides its workhorse back inside the five, close to the first down marker. But short, third down and less than one. You know, they talk about great backs getting stronger as the game goes along, and he, he seems to be doing just that. Over 96 yards, or at 96 yards right now. It would be his fourth 100-yard game of the season and 14th career. And he stacked up. He stopped. Penetration by Omari Alexander, the redshirt senior from Louisville. He was the first to arrive. Yeah, you're going to see him come off the edge, off the right side or left side from the offensive side and then you get a little penetration that's all you need when you want to make these stops it's fourth down and one field goals won't win you this type of game nope. Harris pumps throws caught touchdown UTSA Joshua Cephas His third touchdown of the season. Wow. And having a quiet night, you know, 84 yards a week ago with a touchdown, but now in this drive where you get Sincere McCormick going, he's up over 17 rushes, seven in this half alone already in the third quarter. And this is just great patience here. And to have the confidence to stick with the call and we don't want three we want sevens. Frank Harris. Oh, you're going to let me roll left? Well, I'm just going to take my time and just drop a dime. Roadrunners on the board again. Bowling Green, Kentucky, home to the National Corvette Museum. Absolutely gorgeous museum. You got to check it out. And this matchup tonight between Western Kentucky and UTSA, it's felt like we've had some race cars on the football field. A lot of history inside the museum, a lot of history around this Western Kentucky football program that dates all the way back to 1913. So come on down to South Central Kentucky, book a visit to the Corvette Museum and catch a game here at Houchins Smith Stadium. Duplessis with a short kick, Beanie Bishop from across the 10. He's been knocking on the door a couple of times on these returns, but he's strung out and tackled across the 20. And take a look at last drive. We do it would be a matter of time before we saw this man get involved. Sincere McCormick, seven carries on that last drive, did a nice job. He's up right at 96 yards. 
but just pounding up front. The offensive line doing an excellent job, and the payoff to Cephas for the seven on fourth down. Back to work for Bailey Zappi in Western Kentucky. 230 yards through the air for Zappi after 488 last week against Michigan State. And on the slant, that pass is caught by a new target, Ben Ratzleff, the graduate senior, who actually is another member of that Houston Baptist crew. Here's Jareth Stearns on second and short, and he picks up a first down. And this is what this offense is about. Move, playing fast, moving quick, keep the defense off balance. Letting them, the receivers, do work with the ball in their hands early. First and ten. Some razzle-dazzle. Zappy. Checks down incomplete. He was looking for C.J. Jones, who was out of bounds anyway. It's a good job by him not to touch the ball. <laughs> he, he almost reached out to try to catch it. Would have been illegal touching. Yes. <laughs> that's, been the, that's been the call of the day. It, it has. Like, yeah. well, we, we did have a you know nice, lengthy discussion about it prior came to up, the game. Yeah, so. it came up in the, in the Texas-Oklahoma game. Yep. From the 38, it's second and 10. Complete to the tight end, Belgian, his second catch of the day. And he barrel rolls his way close to midfield. He's ruled down at the 47. Again, you change the pocket, you move one way and go back the other direction. It's a little waggle, you get it out to your tight end for a nice gain and pick up first down. And you get these big. D-line players, the guys up front, the bigs, Jalen Haynes, Danzler, Matterson, running sideline to sideline, trying to catch the ball. Takes a toll on him. On first down, Jones on the comeback route, stays in bounds, and a short tackle made by Corey Mayfield, Jr. Really good tackle in space, and you get in that situation as a receiver, you're pinned in on the sideline. Just catch, turn out of bounds. Because when you tend to go back inside, everybody gets to get hands on that football, or try to anyway. Take what you get. Ball in UTSA territory on second down. Now cover two on the back end. Two high safeties. And a pre-snap penalty. It's got to be delay a game. Ball start, offense, number 78. Five yard penalty, remains second down. Take a look at the young freshman. Just a flinch. That's all it takes. That's a lot of big trying to stop moving. 6'3", 310 from Rome, Georgia. Wesley's Second penalty of the day on second down now. Zappi steps up and is covered up quickly by Charles Wiley. The Ole Miss transfer. Honorable mention all conference USA a season ago. One of the leaders on this defensive front for UTSA. Talk about a humble guy coming from the SEC. Came in here and tried to blend his way in. Didn't, didn't come in here with a big head, but came in trying to, trying to be a leader for the Roadrunners. Third and long now for Western Kentucky. They were down 14-3 way back in the first quarter. And they're down by 11 again. On the ground to Cofield. He's back into UTSA territory, but well short of the first down marker. It's a nice tackle there by Harmonson. And the intent all along said had to have been four downs here. That was why yeah, they for sure. did that on third down. Western Kentucky needs the 43. Fourth and six. Dropped. Jareth Stearns. 
the go-to guy with a huge drop for Western Kentucky. And he hands the ball back to UTSA. You just don't see this from the sure-handed Jared Stearns. UTSA ball when we come back. Just outside the Alumni Center, Big Red in statue form. Some game recaps from across the Conference USA landscape. Charlotte got back on track with a win over FIU on Friday night. Chris Reynolds with four touchdown passes. Marshall wins in overtime against Old Dominion and UAB. The preseason favorite to win the West Division is playing catch up to UTSA right now, but they knocked off Florida Atlantic 31 to 14. And Marshall just still trying to find their way right now with the new group or new coaching staff in and trying to get it going. End around Cephas. Pushed out of bounds at the 45-yard line of Western Kentucky. It was D'Angelo Malone who got him out. And it doesn't look like a big gainer, but that's four and a half, five yards on first down. Remember, good starting field position for UTSA after Western Kentucky turned it over on downs and a chance late in the third quarter to really put the Hilltoppers in a bind. It's fake to Daniels, and the pass was high and incomplete in the direction of Cephas. It and this may have is, gotten tipped. Absolutely did at the line of scrimmage. But this is where Frank Harris has to understand the situation in the game. You've got a great running play here going, and a great job of getting his hands up. Might have been tipped twice. Darius Ship. <laughs> and then Cephas still almost brought it down, but hand that ball off, right? You had an RPO there. Go ahead and hand it off. You had a nice lane, running lane name for B.J. Daniels. Third and five. Harris dances. Caught, but dropped. Watson, the tight end, couldn't hang on. It's incomplete. Remember this. Remember that play before Early here. Where, field we, is an incomplete pass. where he tried to force the RPO, but... You get a look at him working in the pocket here, that special. Fast feet. He wants something, he gets forced inside, but he just keeps his head about him, finds somebody downfield, makes an accurate throw. But the play before that, the second down play, where he pulled it instead of giving the, giving the, the run. You get a team to turn it over on downs. Previous play is under further video review. All right, now this is interesting. This could go a lot of different ways. They could rule a catch, and the receiver was down by contact. They could have ruled catch and fumble. Well, the fumble was picked up by the Roadrunners, so that takes that out of the equation, if, if they rule it a fumble. But I'm not so sure they have enough to change this call. After That's review, right. the ruling on the field is confirmed. Fourth down. Yeah, quick review. That's the right call because he really never secured it. And at that point, it's moving around, it's bobbling around, and a great job of just fighting it out of there by Edwards. Miguel Edwards, the redshirt sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, has made some big plays in the second half out of the Western Kentucky secondary. And they've needed it, right? They, they were had a couple – one drive there with two plays went right over the head of your corner on that side, and they insert him in the game, and he's back there competing. Lucas Dean with the punt. And it dies inside the five. Gorgeous work by last year's Conference USA Special Teams Player of the Year. All three units, offense, defense, and special teams needed to get off to a good start. That's what's happened for UTSA this season. The 5-0 record matches their best start in program history. They are one of just 17 unbeaten FBS teams. They're getting votes in the top 25. They pitched their program's first ever shutout against Lamar. They beat Illinois to start the season in Champaign. A lot of first senses, if you will, for UTSA under second-year coach Jeff Trailer, who calls himself 
a Texas high school football coach at heart. 15 years and three state championships at Gilmer High School, home of the Buckeyes. He respects the heck out of the game. I know that. From the five. Deep shot for Jarrett Stearns, who's got it and stays in bounds around Rashad Wisdom, who finally corrals him at the 40-yard line. So you had, a, you had a chance to really, really do, do some harm, and you let him off the hook, and Wisdom gets beat outside on the, a slot fade. The, the chains weren't set by the time Zappi snapped that football, and he flips it out of bounds second down. This, this is what the people came to see right here. Up over the outside shoulder. That's what the people came to see. And a good job on the back end to make sure you keep it to just a nice catch by Rashad Wisdom. Stern's 10th catch of the night. Remember, he had the big drop on fourth down. It's second and 10 from the 40 of UTSA. Zappi. Across his body, Tinsley is wide open. He waltzes in for the Western Kentucky touchdown. <laughs> Toppers are right back in this thing. Final minute in the third. I'll tell you, not enough is said about his ability to escape the pocket and move. But he's trying to throw underneath on the top side of the screen when we get back to this replay. But he is really good with the ball in his hands outsides. Make, makes great decisions. Sees the field extremely well. Toppers go for two to make it a field goal distance between Western Kentucky and UTSA. Zappi. He is dragged down from behind Tremaine Bell with a little bit of help from Taquarius Henry. We're going to see how far exactly he comes to get this ball. But once quarterback breaks out, see, it's a, it's a scramble drill. And this is such a great job by Tensley to get there. He has a little sit-down route, but he sees his quarterback scramble. And look at him take off the same direction. I mean, that's textbook. That's how you draw it up. Scramble drill right there. He's in the right spot at the right time. And then look at Zappi on the back end. Stays calm. And just a beautiful touch throw right over the top. Right back in the mix for the Hilltoppers. That was the 11th touchdown of the game for both of these teams. Ten different players have scored to showcase the depth on both of these rosters. See my smile on my face? <laughs> yeah, I you're an offensive guy. That's right. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> I love it. It's going to be a long day in film session tomorrow <laughs> for the defensive coordinators. Well, see, it's not about, you know, in their minds. They know these teams are talented, right? It's about getting those critical stops at the critical moments. The there Hilltoppers just got a critical stop and put points on the board. They'll see if they could duplicate that right now. 50 seconds to go in the third. UTSA had the football around midfield. They were driving to potentially go up three scores. Western Kentucky forces a punt. They march 95 yards downfield, and it's a five-point game now. Yeah, just, just great play. I mean, outstanding we're going to go well over I'm going to go ahead and say we're going to well over a thousand yards of offense tonight well over sure Maurice Crum the first year defensive coordinator for Western Kentucky might not be too happy about that sincere McCormick there was an awkward mesh point on that handoff D'Angelo Malone with the tackle a gain of three it's second down and seven that's that's just Frank trying Frank Harris trying to to really sell that defensive end to come down the longer he holds on to it the longer the DN has to wait to commit to it pass complete to Franklin guarded by Bishop of Western Kentucky clock continues to tick and it's third down and one
And they'll take it to the fourth here and face a third and one on four, on, in the fourth quarter. A shootout from Houchin Smith Stadium in Bowling Green. 42-37, UTSA leads Western Kentucky in an early conference season showdown in CUSA. A pivotal play coming up here. It is third and one for UTSA, trying to keep the drive alive. Harris under center, McCormick the tailback. He's at 100 yards rushing on the day. You got to give it to McCormick here, right? I mean, there's nine guys in the box. There he goes. First down to the 36. Malone covers him up. He needed one, he got two. That's, that's what the great ones do. Behind Bo Wilson and... Excuse me, Terrell Haynes and Makai Hart on the right side. First and 10, early fourth quarter. Pocket collapses and Harris ditches it. A flag comes in near the intended wide receiver, Zakari Franklin, who is covered by Miguel Edwards. It's just, it's just a shoulder tug on, on top here. It's a whip route, which is an in. You break in like you're running slant and come out. Pass interference, defense, number 13. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Did you think that was catchable? Yeah, but it, how do they know if he if he's if he's you know watch right here this young man as soon as soon as he comes back out of the route right here he grabs the top of his outside shoulder that's a grab on the outside right so you never know if he can get out the hold is a hold it's not a pass interference that's where you could see where it's ooh that's up around the neck area very fortunate for Broderick, Broderick Martin there. To... Could have easily been roughing the passer. They fake the reverse, and Harris puts on the Jets. Roped out of bounds by Kincaid. Short of the first down, it's second down coming up, remember, after the penalty. Yeah, that's a nice job, a great play call. Faked everybody out, because I, I thought it was going to the sweep as well. Had to take a second look. Now Barry Lunny has pressed the right buttons at the right time going deep into his playbook and credit the athletes on the field for UTSA. They've executed. Hard count and a false start on the Roadrunners. Second and two is going to turn into second and seven. False start. Offense. Number 55. Five yard pin. Second down. Watch the fake reverse here. He just kind of flips it up and good tuck there by Zakari Franklin to help sell it. It's great. I mean, these offensively, both these teams are executing so well. Yeah. It, it's hard not to get fooled with your eyes if you're a defender on a lot of stuff. McCormick tried to make a move in the hole. And he was dragged back by Brathwaite. Brathwaite's a guy who's got Conference USA Defensive Player of the Week honors under his belt already. A big special teams guy before this season, but he's really become a stalwart defensively for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, he, he's, he's earned that trust. He's doing a great job. And glad to have him back in the lineup, but you've got to get off the field right here. Pressure on third down. Harris so good at keeping the play alive. For Cephas. Oh, that's unfortunately, that's going to be pass interference. And it, the crowd's not going to like it, but it's pass interference. There's clear contact. And the defensive player was just in a bad spot. Yeah. Pass interference. Defense, number one, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. It's 100% the right spot. Look at Cephas trying to work back to the ball, and there's the contact. But then we get Frank Harris to keep the play alive. You have a untouched blitzer down the pipe, and you're able to get away 
and then you stiff arm another defender and just launch it up. Give your guy a chance. And this is what happens when you when you allow your guys to get an opportunity. And that's that's an unfortunate penalty. But a penalty nonetheless on Antoine Kincaid. Fresh set of downs, ball at the 29 of Western Kentucky. Harris inside the 25. And he's tackled by Edwards at the 15. First down, UTSA. Design quarterback draw. You see him go back and read it. You see a middle linebacker go wide with the three receivers, and he takes off right up the middle. And the plays that Coach Lonnie has not pushed the right buttons on, Frank has made him right. Frank Harris has made him correct. Making his O coordinator look good on first down, McCormick. He shrugged off the first tackle attempt by Jaden Hunter, but Hunter slowed him down enough. It's a gain of call it three. That's what you need to do is get him slowed down so your help can get there, right? Yeah. Get you some help. He is so strong. Now, if you're UTSA, the main thing on your mind when you're running the ball, throwing the ball, doing whatever, is ball security right here. Second down. It's Franklin, who's tackled by Edwards. Man, this redshirt sophomore from Fort Lauderdale, an Oklahoma transfer, is starting to make some plays. He is. He's, well, he's just being more aggressive, right? Even on the penalty, he's being more aggressive, forcing UTSA to earn what they get, right? You get it, you get that call, and he doesn't care. That's a good job fighting off blocks, getting in there to make that tackle. Third down and six. Here we go. Harris extends the play. Flag comes in. Pass is caught at the 10-yard line. The flag was it's in the vicinity of holding. Yeah. And listen, if he throws it early. Holding. Offense. Number 75. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. And keep going with that point if he there. Yeah. If he throws this ball early, he's got something because he has JT Clark, DeClorian Clark, in, in the same spot he was at where he threw the ball to him later. But if he gets it to him now, that hold doesn't happen. When he breaks the pocket and contain, the offensive line really don't, they don't know where he is, so they grab on a little bit. You get that holding call. It's a great breakdown, and it's third and long. Harris has got five touchdowns tonight. That's a school record. And Jeff Trailer wants a timeout. Prior to the snap, timeout, UTSA. 10.42 to go in the half. game. UTSA trying to go up two scores in the fourth. Get out your phones again, everybody. We've got another QR code coming your way. It's time to vote for player of the game. Is it Frank Harris? or Bailey Zappi, the quarterback for UTSA or the quarterback for Western Kentucky. Monster nights for both of these quarterbacks tonight. There's the QR code. Get your phone out, get the camera revved up, scan it, vote. Frank Harris, remember, also has a receiving touchdown today. He's been a Swiss Army knife. Uh, don't, don't forget the cause fumble, the forced fumble. That's right. On his one interception. Some defensive stats. Absolutely, which is the weirdest stat line ever. <laughs> It's going to be a tight race for player of the game, much like this overall matchup. Third down and 16 for UTSA, out of the Roadrunners' timeout. Harris is thrown out of bounds around the shoulder pads. A big-time tackle that time by Western Kentucky's Michael Pitts. This is getting physical. He's trying to cut back inside. Yeah, the great job of, of staying off the neck. He's around the shoulders and arms. That's a clean tackle. Really good hustle play. You've been chasing this guy around all night. You got stiff arm by him a couple plays ago, and now you finally get a chance to give him some business. Michael Pitts on the stop. 
Sets up a fourth down field goal try for Duplessis from 35. It's good. It's still a one score game, but a little bit more breathing room for UTSA. They lead by eight, 45 to 37. We've had plenty of chances to, to kind of blow this thing open, yeah. right? And the Hilltoppers just continue to hang around and, and stiffen at the right time. And, I, and for me, that's a stop. You kept them out of the end zone. You kept yourself within a one possession game here. Duplessis has made some big kicks in his career for UTSA, including a game winner against Memphis. That was a game in which UTSA trailed 21 0. And if you talk to Jeff Trailer, this is his 18th game now as the head coach of UTSA. And he says it's one of the trademarks of our program. All of our games feel like they're down to the wire and decided in the closing minutes. Well, I think the big thing about that is you have tough minded kids, right? Yeah. Your, your kids are tough minded and they, they don't mind going wire to wire, finishing, having to finish the games. And I thought there was no way they had a chance to win that game at Memphis because that's how. Great Memphis was playing at the time, but great job by them. Some Saturday headlines from a great day in college football. How about the wild affair for the Red River rivalry? Oklahoma and Texas with one for the ages. Oklahoma prevails 55-48. Texas A&M leading Alabama in the third quarter. What's going on there? Iowa comes from behind to overtake Penn State in the heartland. And that was another crazy game between Ole Miss and Arkansas. 52 to 51. Arkansas went for two, did not get it. And the game that everybody set their DVRs for, UMass and UConn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> An Marcus Camby and Rebecca Lobo oh, who uh, got those, right? That's very good. Jareth Stearns with the catch. And he's brought down at the 29. Yeah, I, it's uh, impressive basketball history knowledge by you, Seth, on, on both those programs. Well done. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and slowly but surely, Zappi has just gotten back up into his normal area. Yardage, he's climbing. 359 and counting. Jeez. Robichaux switches sides. Patient run. Still on top. See, he wasn't down. He was laying on top of the player, and that's where you just got to gotta make sure he's down. You're not doing anything silly or cheap. Right. But just make sure they blow the whistle. That is an injured UTSA defensive lineman, Brandon Matterson. Again, 29 players on this Roadrunners roster from the greater San Antonio area. Madison, a starter, playing in his 35th career game for the Roadrunners. And the big guys up front have been logging some heavy minutes, running all over the field. Yeah, on a warm night. And you see the 2-1-0 hat, like they, they rep it, right? They, they rep it proud. The San Antonio area code, 2 one part of the triangle of toughness, the 210 brand, a big pillar of the culture here for UTSA. The, the mental and physical toughness on and off the field is really emphasized and celebrated by this program. And it's a triangle because of the three pillars, offense, defense, special teams, they all got to have it. Like right here on third and one. Direct snap to Robichaux, who's got the first down and is met by Trevor Harmonson in the hole. It's always so tough to, to defend on those third and shorts. You go wildcat, so you have an extra blocker. If you're not sure tackling, that's where you see a lot of bust plays, where somebody pops out and then ends up going 63 yards for a score. Great job at least getting them to the ground. They do convert, but you get them on the ground. From the 36, it's first and 10. That pass was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Tinsley couldn't come back to the football. Second 
I believe it was Charles Wiley off the edge. And the, the intense battle between both sides, offensive and defensive lines for both teams. I mean, it has been a war up front. And for the most part, they've kept both quarterbacks clean, allowed the running backs to do their thing as well. Whittington, the tailback on second down. Zappy to Tinsley. How on earth did he catch that? Blanketed by Corey Mayfield Jr. First down, Western Kentucky into UTSA territory. That's just a great throw and a great catch using his body while being held. Mayfield, Mayfield all over him doing a great job of forcing him to make a tough catch, and he does just that. Zappy. Trying to strike while the iron's hot. He's got Tinsley again to the 20. And this guy can throw it. Poof. He, and it just looks easy. Zappi looking to Jared Stearns who makes the catch and scores on a route that was nearly jumped by Rashad Wisdom. It ends in Jared Stern's seventh touchdown of the season. And it should have been should have been knocked down and complete. Stearns thought he had the pick, couldn't get to it. You go through there and you knock that down with your left hand. Now they're playing from back here. Now they're going here for the tie. Zabby with the dart. Hensley wide to the left. Cofield is the running back. Daywood Davis, top of your screen. That's Tinsley in motion. Two tight ends set. Two points to try and tie. Throwback. Incomplete a collision. It's no good. Two point attempt fails, but what a quick drive. And watch this laser. Great concentration by Stearns. And the Hilltoppers right there. Zappi loves it. What a night at the office for Frank Harris, the UTSA quarterback. Roadrunners lead by two after Western Kentucky scores and misses a two-point try. Six total touchdowns for Frank Harris. His counterpart, Bailey Zappi. 423 yards through the air and a handful of touchdowns on his own accord. And it's your serve. That's right. Mr. Harris. There you go. That That is the, the perfect cross-sport analogy. This kick from Munson. Waved off by Dadrian Taylor. Join us next Saturday at 3 o'clock Eastern time for College Kickoff Live. Cam Smith, Michael Felder, and Will Blackman kick off our college football coverage every Saturday. The show leads into our 3.30 game. That's UAB at Southern Miss Stadium. Welcome to the game. UAB got that new stadium, no pun intended, and uh, their season back on track, a win for the Blazers today. Yeah, I'm sure they would have would have loved to have opened that stadium up a little better, but uh, Liberty had other things in mind. That's right. UAB rooting hard for Western Kentucky in this game. On first and ten from the 25, it's Sincere McCormick. Not much. Give him two or three. That's gorgeous. It is. Right on the doorstep of downtown Birmingham. Protective stadium sounds like a place a quarterback would want to play. Yes, <laughs> and do well. Right? Great news for the folks at UAB. Second and long, Harris on the slant. That pass is caught. And he stays on his feet across the 40-yard line. That's J.T. Clark. And he's the one who got it started earlier this evening. Using his size and again go back to him on the slant route. He's just too big too strong Gains inside position. It's tough to stop Fresh set of downs at the 43 Harris with time 
Some air underneath that one, and Cephas is underneath it, out of bounds at the Western Kentucky 43-yard line. And UTSA has gone over the 500-yard mark now in total offense. I mean, if Frank Harris keeps dealing the way he's dealing, we're going to have two 400-yard passers in this game, and possibly five. <laughs> I mean, these guys are out here playing. First down, deep shot. It's caught. Wow. By Clark for his third touchdown. <laughs> he beats Beanie Bishop, who's right there. And, and I'm going to tell you, there's a little subtle thing that JT Clark does here. Right? The hands don't get big. The eyes don't get big. He just keeps running through the end zone, and the ball just drops in there, and he makes the catch before Bishop can try and swipe. 43 wow. yards on the touchdown. <laughs> they should frame that jersey at the end of the night. Looks like they're trying to hang it up. <laughs> Good gracious, man. He is definitely making his claim as well as Frank Harris. For player of the week and it's just a straight go route but watch him stack on top of the receiver that's a great job stacking and you see he doesn't get excited he just waits for it to come down and one hand because bishop's holding his right hand he catches that with his left hand only wow but I, I, give me some love for frank harris though i mean that was that, that yes. throw if it's anywhere else it's incomplete or Absolutely. maybe even intercepted Seven for 160. Wow. And three touches. Boy, oh boy. You'd want these guys in your fantasy football lineup. Frank Harris has taken another step at the controls for UTSA. In, in a big game against a, a quality opponent, against a quarterback that's getting a ton of hype, right? And, and not that he hasn't performed, because he has, but Frank has just answered the bell as well. Beanie Bishop back deep to receive. He just gave up the touchdown. You feel bad for him. I don't know if the coverage could have been any better, but there's, as they say, no defense for the perfect throw. Well, he's going to want to definitely want an opportunity to return that. And this is just mano y mano right here. And the little subtle stack at the top of this route. He gets by Bishop, and then he gets back on top. See him close the gap on top of him? I mean, that's a little thing. Keeps a little separation, but that's all he needed was a little. And you're up, Mr. Zappi. Ball in Bailey Zappi's court with Western Kentucky down 11 again, 6.39 to go. Zappi's flushed, pursued by Clarence Hicks. And with that alarm clock going off in his head, he flips it out of bounds. Smart play and great hustle from the backside. Just relentlessly chasing him down was Clarence Hicks. Who, if you watch number nine on the field, there's just, just a bundle of energy. The whole time he's out there, just bouncing around, ready to go. He's a Havoc wreaker, three and a half sacks on the season. In the two-point stance here on second and ten. Zappi delivers to Jarrett Stearns across the 45 and thrown down by Antonio Parks. Watch this throw. Between two defenders, Stearns doing a nice job of getting back to it. Well, that's a... The middle read wrap route. First and 10, up the seam, signals crossed. Daywood Davis had his head turned the other way. Looked like he was expecting him to be a little more inside yep. leverage on the defender. Maybe like a skinny post with 
And maybe that was what the play was. Double post, your first receiver crossing the face of the safety. The next one just kind of going right behind him. But nobody hurt. Second down. Ball near midfield. Four-man rush. Check down. Adam Cofield, he's got a lot of space. First down to the 40. And how many times tonight have we seen Brady Zappi, Bailey Zappi, excuse me, just make the right choice? Right? Even here, you, you want to go downfield, you want to push it downfield. There's still plenty of time in this game, but you've got a ton of yards if you just dump it down to your back. Great decision. From the 40, after a 12-yard gain, it's Noah Whittington inside the 30. 11 more for Western Kentucky. And there's some juice. The way Whittington hit that hole, there's some juice. That's Tariq Woolen, the injured roadrunner. I mean, watch him hit this hole. There's not a lot of space. Splits right there. Waits for his guard to get there. Bo Wilson does a nice job, and he waits for Bo Wilson to kick out and just goes right off him. Nice gain. I mean, great speed. This offense is, is definitely tough to deal with. Just trying to get over the hump, however, and win for the second time this season. Tariq Woolen getting stretched out right now on the field. Woolen is a Senior Bowl watch list honoree, considered a, an NFL prospect. He is a senior. And a converted wide receiver, as a matter of fact. He has really taken to the defensive backfield over the second half of his college career, and he limps off and hopefully is able to return to this game. UTSA needs him for the final 537. All right, well, you, you think about size, right? 6'4", 205 with great hips and can move when he's your cornerback at 6'4", 205. I mean, that's, that size is, is something you can't teach. And the ball skills from playing receiver, over 1,000 yards of offense approaching. We're going to get to 1,200. All right. We're going to get to 12. Double reverse flea flicker. Look at this. Zappy. Finds Jarrett Stearns. A lot of red in front of him. Tackled by Wisdom at the 15. This is a great, great recovery. But double reverse flea flicker screen. And Zappi under duress just kind of floats it up to him. But look at this play right here by Rashad Wisdom. Tell you what, Lorenzo Dantzler almost blew that play up from the UTSA defensive line. Instead, it's first down from the 15. Bullet through the hands of Dakota Thomas. And that's a that's great defense. Ball's out in front a little bit. But this is great defense right here. Watch him slow walk, and then he drives downhill as soon as he sees the slant coming. Ball up and away, and I think if it's a little bit lower, you might get that call, but he didn't spin his body, right? That's what you look for, especially if that hand's on the back hip. You look for that body to spin. You know, for a quarterback, you are you are a tough critic on, on quarterbacks. Well, you, you don't give the wide, you, you, you never apologize for the wide receivers. I, I do. Ball star. Always. That's Off what I mean. Field. That's what I mean. Number 77. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Mason Brooks, who was injured and is back on the field. Yeah, I, if, it, if his body spins as he's running, I'm going to let him play. And I, I'd want him to let him play. Because I'm not always on the field, right? My defense is out there. <laughs> I want my defense to get that call. <laughs> or not get that call, I should say. Second down and 15. Jarrett Stearns pushed out of bounds by Dadrian Taylor at the 10. Five yards to go to move the chains. What do you think of that play design? 
just kind of bringing him out of the backfield like that. Uh, absolutely, getting the ball in space to him, right, so yeah. he can make plays. And last week and this week, that's 31 catches in two games, and there's still some time left. Jeez. Third and four. Zappi, Ball's ball batted up. up in the air and incomplete. Clear whistle that time. And this is interesting. Here comes the field goal unit led by Braden Narvison. Made field goal would make the score 52 to 46. That makes sense. Get it to a, a one score yeah, game. Yeah, you're going to need it. So might as well get it here and you just put it on your defense to get a stop. From 27 for Narvison. He's got it. Narvison trims the lead to six. 422 to go in the fourth. 52 to 46 UTSA over Western Kentucky with 4.22 to go. The story of this game, the quarterbacks. 349 yards and six touchdowns for Frank Harris. Bailey Zappi closing in on 505 touchdowns. Remember, get your phones out and scan the QR code Number to vote for the your player is of the game. Is it Bailey Zappi, Western Kentucky's quarterback? Is it Frank Harris, UTSA's quarterback? Mind you, Sk Frank Harris came in here with just six touchdown passes. So he, he doubled his count. Wow. <laughs> Double down. <laughs> Double down. Wow. UTSA ready to kick off. And UTSA, it's, it's, on, it's onside kick time. Sticks Jones, the lone deep man, just in case. And Munson boots it deep. I think if you were under two minutes and maybe you try it, right, so they can't run out the clock, but you got all three timeouts if you're Western Kentucky. You got to hang it on your defense right here to go out and get a stop. Can you slow down the juggernaut that has become Frank Harris? Six touchdown passes. 49 yards rushing. Program record six touchdown passes, we should add. Drive starts at the 25. Cardenas in motion. McCormick between the hash marks and out across the 35. First down, UTSA. Great start. Great start. That's not the kind of start you want if you're Western Kentucky. And if you're Frank Harris, you want to keep your eyeballs on the play clocks. There's one on both ends, one up at the scoreboard, and as long as the game clock's running, you should never snap the ball before three seconds left. Literally, the four-minute offense in effect right now for UTSA. It's first and ten. Play clock at three. And Harris slides down to avoid a big hit. Brathwaite touched him down at the 38. Gain of two. Timeout, WKU. That is their first of the second half. Timeout, Western seconds. Kentucky. They need to get off the field and give the ball Correction. back to Bailey Zappi. A vision is being realized in San Antonio for Jeff Trailer and UTSA. UTSA has won eight of its last nine games. Seven wins last season, most by a first-year coach, and a big part of his vision, you got to get good recruits in from the state of Texas, and you have to have good facilities to do it. UTSA with some gorgeous new facilities that have debuted under Jeff Trailer's tenure, again in his second year, and now he says they're on par with a good high school program in the state of Texas. <laughs> you see right there the triangle, the 2-1-0 triangle. I mean, it's... 
fantastic. And, and this is what you need nowadays, right? You need facilities. Where are we going to practice? Where are we going to lift? All those things matter when you're out recruiting kids. Slant route broken up. Intended for Cephas and Antoine Kincaid, one of the most consistent players on Western Kentucky's defense, sets up third down. Now, if I'm Western Kentucky, I'm not going to allow number 88 near sideline to beat me. Third down, Cephas on the bubble screen, swarmed by Hilltoppers. Fourth down. Darius Ship leading the way, along with Jeremy Darvin, Michael Pitts. Felt like there were 11 hats around the football. Well, that's timeout. what it looked like, WKU. absolutely. That is their second charge timeout yep. of the half. It will be a 30-second timeout. Puzzling on the, you know, the first play of the drive, you, you run off a first down, you get 10 yards on a run, and then you three straight passes. And now, now you're punting. And time's not a, a factor right now. Not even close to a factor. I mean, if I've got Sincere McCormick back there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to win it with my bell count. Western Kentucky's got... Two touchdowns and a field goal on its last three drives. That's a good trend that Tyson Helton wants to continue. Touchdown would tie. Touchdown plus an extra point would give Western Kentucky the lead over Jeff Trailer and UTSA. He told us all our games are close. He's right again. Both these teams have played in a number of close games. The punt by Lucas Dean angled toward the sideline and way out of bounds. Wow. Gonna get great for positioning. I mark it all the way up at the 30. And that's where Bailey Zappi, with a couple of love taps from Josh Stearns, gets ready to. Lead the Hilltoppers down the field with a chance to tie and potentially take the lead here in the fourth quarter. C.J. Jones is the running back, motioned out. Pass caught over the middle. It's Stearns. The problem is you're never going to get home, right? You can't get to him because there's so many windows. They're in five wide. You're not playing tight coverage. The middle of the field is wide open here. So you're not going to be able to get home. There's so much space inside. First and 10 and the give to Adam Cofield. Twisted down by Trevor Harmonson at midfield. Harmonson was trying to rip that ball out. It's a great job of ball security by Cofield. Seven yard pickup. Second and three. Cofield again. Dances to daylight. Brought down at the 39 of UTSA. First and 10 Western Kentucky. Zappy wide open over the middle, and Josh Stearns dropped it at the hip. That's his second or third drop. Well, this is such a good route here. You, you clear out with the first receiver, and you bring him underneath. And it's a little on his back hip. However, that's a catchable ball, and you've got to catch that. He's in the end zone by now. <laughs> if he hauls that one in, the closest defender was five yards away. Second and ten. Draw play, Whittington. He breaks a tackle and falls forward to the 33. 
And Hermanson reaching a little bit, and maybe fatigue starting to set in a bit. They've been on the field a lot in this fourth quarter. Quick hitter, Jared Stearns gets the first down to the 29. And it's a strong run, strong blocking up in front by Daywood Davis. First and 10, Josh Stearns makes the sure-handed grab. Hangs on to the football and is brought down at the five. And it's, it's too difficult for the safety who's playing 13, 14 yards deep to get all the way outside to, to carry that wheel route. I mean, that is too difficult. Zappi's got too strong arm and he's able to shoot it in there before you can get there. Ninety seconds in counting, and Western Kentucky now met want to hold on to the ball a little bit so that UTSA doesn't have too much time. First and goal. Jareth Stearns towards the goal line. A flag comes in way away from the play, and Stearns is ruled down inside the one. Here's the thing: you're not guaranteed to score, right? So, so I don't. Okay. I'll, you go score. Okay. Let's see what this flag is. Personal foul, chop block, offense, Ooh. number 70 and number 78. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay second down. It's a huge penalty. Correction, first down. And it bodes well for them in their quest to use a little more cl clock. Yeah. But tough call. So now 20 yards to go. It's still first and goal. Watch Stearns in the middle of the field. Pass is tipped and a flag comes in. Tariq Woolen put his hands up. And it was a tipped pass, though, said. Yeah, they're, 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 this should be called off. <laughs> unless, he's called in, unless he's calling a hold prior to. There is no foul for defensive pass interference. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down. And if you can't get home, get your big paws up and get them in the way. And that's a nice job. I think, believe it's Brennan. Matterson gets his big paw up there and gets a piece of it. Good job by the officials to get together and get it worked out. Less than a minute to go. It's second and goal. Middle of the field right now. Middle of the field. It's not there. Zappi's got room to run. Out of bounds at the 15, third and goal. Two plays, 15 yards. You, you go shot, shot. I, I, I don't. You don't need shot. 48 seconds. You can get the ball inside. They've been hitting those little slant routes with space, allowing the receivers to run, or you motion back down here and see if they still don't adjust to the wheel route from your motion. They're still sitting in a cover two, so it'd be a long way. They'd have to trade it. They're sitting in a cover two. It'd be a long way for them to have to run to get to that. Third and goal. Intercepted. It's Clarence Hicks. Moving on the field is an interception by the defense. Stunning. Yeah, he's just a little behind on the throw. And a great job by Hicks to fall back into the play. Zappi thinks he's got a completion, and Hicks says denied with a diving effort. Clarence Hicks with a flair for the dramatic. He had a sack on fourth down 
that sealed the win against UNLV last week. And here he has an interception that may very well have sealed this win against Western Kentucky. 43 seconds left. And Western Kentucky has one timeout. His second career interception. And that, that was of the difficult kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the dive. You see, he's, he's rushing the passer. He's got these big, thick gloves on. I mean, I don't even know how he held on to that ball. Great effort. It's hard to pinpoint him. He, he's on the roster as an outside linebacker. Size-wise, he's really more of a safety. And Frank Harris, out of the victory, victory formation, takes a knee. Timeout, WKU. That is their third and final timeout. And UTSA needs one more snap. That's that's just it said with all of the eye popping offensive numbers. It's a defensive play that decides the game. What, what did I talk about earlier? Critical stop. Yeah, right? you get that critical stop and that was a critical turnover. Tough chance. They, they really just abused that defense all over the field. And when they needed it, they came up with the stop. The play clock has not started yet. And here we go. And UTSA is moving into uncharted territory. They are 6-0 for the first time in program history. They are now 2-0 in Conference USA. And they win for the first time here in Bowling Green. This is a UTSA team that was receiving votes in the top 25 going into this weekend. They're going to get more votes at least when the next polls come out. Yeah, absolutely. It's, what a great effort, right? Um, both sides of the ball. Defense is going to look at it and be like, well, we, we, we gave this up, we gave that up. But when you needed it, and there was multiple occasions where they got stops that they needed, but that last interception was fantastic. And they have showed here tonight they can go out and rack up points and yards with the best of them as well. 